You're watching NASA TV. MRM2, up. And the pressure five. Good morning from Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room. At this hour, flight controllers here are preparing to join their Russian counterparts in support of the first spacewalk of the year out of the International Space Station, a spacewalk by two Russian cosmonauts to begin the intricate outfitting of the recently arrived Prishal node module on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Anton Shkaplerov and uh, Pyotr Dubrov are currently uh, suiting up inside uh, the Poisk module airlock on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. They uh, were assisted in climbing into their Russian Orlon spacesuits by NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei about an hour ago, and the Poisk uh, airlock is in the process of being depressurized to vacuum. This spacewalk today begins a complex series of spacewalks planned for the spring, summer, and fall to prepare Prishal for the future arrival of Russian visiting vehicles and to complete the buildup of equipment on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module to which Prishal is attached. For Shkaplerov, this will be the third spacewalk in his career. His two previous spacewalks logged 14 hours and 28 minutes of spacewalking time, including a Russian spacewalk record of 8 hours and 13 minutes that was accrued along with Alexander Mazurkin uh, during Expedition 54 back on February 2nd, 2018. For Pyotr Dubrov, who is in the home stretch of what will ultimately be a 355-day mission on board the International Space Station. This will be the fourth spacewalk of his career, his three previous spacewalks totaling 22 hours, 38 minutes. This is the 246th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades, the first out of the ISS this year, as I mentioned, and uh, will ultimately uh, be the second spacewalk for Expedition 66, with at least two additional spacewalks planned, U.S. spacewalks planned in the March time frame to, for other work that is expected to be conducted by U.S. OS crew members. Once outside uh, the Poisk airlock, uh, the uh, two Russian cosmonauts will be equipped uh, with helmet cameras, uh, as is typically the case for not only a Russian spacewalk, but for a U.S. spacewalk. Anton Shkaplerov will be wearing the helmet camera that will show the number 22 in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Pyotr Dubrov's helmet camera will carry the number 16 on the lower right-hand corner. A variety of activities all uh, around the Prashal node module planned for today. Uh, the two cosmonauts will be installing handrails uh, to facilitate future spacewalk activity. They will route and mate a series of uh, cables uh, for the core's automated rendezvous system between Prashal and the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. They will also install uh, what are called shortcut handrails, smaller uh, length uh, handrails that uh, again will be used uh, to assist in the uh, future spacewalk activities that are planned throughout the course of the year. Prishal, uh, which docked uh, to the International Space Station back in November, and we'll show you the launch and docking video of that in just a moment, uh, it, uh, will ha it will have rendezvous antennas installed on the bulbous uh, surface of uh, Prishal. That uh, will be used uh, for the arrival of future Russian visiting vehicles that are upcoming in the months and years ahead. They will also uh, remove thermal covers from the handrails that they plan to install 
and they will route and mate uh, a television cable uh, integrating Prishal into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The two crew members will remove a floodlight, relocate the, a television camera that was used for its rendezvous and docking from one location on Prishal to another to facilitate uh, camera views of approaching Russian vehicles in the future. They will install docking targets and remove rendezvous antennas, and there will be a series of jettisons, uh, assuming uh, that all of the tasks are completed. Uh, around uh, six, up to six items are expected to be jettisoned and retrograde from the International Space Station during the course of today's spacewalk. Back on November 24th of last year, a Soyuz uh, 2.1B rocket launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, arcing out to the northeast from the launch site, carrying the Prashal module to its preliminary orbit uh, in fine fashion. Everything went perfectly with the launch, and uh, it started a two-day rendezvous for Prashal that uh, resulted in its arrival attached uh, to a modified progress uh, uh, propulsion craft as it uh, slowly and but surely approached uh, the Naoka module for its uh, automatic link-up that occurred on November 26th. The progress vehicle itself detached from uh, the node module uh, in late December, leaving uh, the node module attached permanently to Naoka for the arrival of uh, future vehicles once uh, the outfitting uh, begins uh, for that particular module. As I mentioned, a series of spacewalks uh, are planned over the course of the next uh, uh, several months. Today's spacewalk will be followed in the uh, April time frame by uh, the next series of spacewalks in which uh, Russian uh, crew members and European uh, crew members, uh, part of the USOS crew uh, for Expedition 67, uh, will be uh, outside uh, working around the Naoka module to uh, prepare the European robotic arm that is attached to Naoka for its installation and activation, and then other uh, spacewalking work uh, to deploy a radiator uh, on the Naoka module uh, will be undertaken and all of this uh, in a series of what uh, will be about a half dozen spacewalks throughout the course of the year to integrate uh, not only uh, Prishal but Naoka into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The uh, spacewalk today will be conducted and uh, overseen by uh, the flight controllers there that you're looking at in this live view from a balcony camera at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in the town of Korolyov. A uh, very familiar view uh, for space station operations. Uh, this uh, group of flight controllers will be working with the Orbit uh, 2 team of flight controllers here in Houston who are in the process of filtering into the room to begin a handover from the Orbit 1 team, which has been on console throughout the course of the overnight hours. The Expedition 66 crew uh, on orbit uh, in support of all of the activities that they're involved in. Uh, the commander is Anton Shkaplerov, who will uh, be joined, of course, outside today by Pyotr Dubrov uh, for the work uh, on today's spacewalk. From left to right, NASA astronauts Raja Chari, Tom Marshburn, uh, European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Moore. Then you see Shkaplerov, Dubrov, NASA astronaut Kayla Barron, and on the far right, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, who, along with Dubrov, uh, is scheduled to return to Earth on March 30th on the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft to wrap up a 355-day mission. For Vandehei, that will be uh, the longest single U.S. space flight in history. On this, says 136 for EV-2, the same for uh, EV-1. And uh, how much time do you still have left on the timer? Uh, two uh, minutes and 50 seconds. This is a view of the Poisk module uh, in which uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov are suited up in their Russian Orlan spacesuits. The uh, 
airlock is in the process of being depressurized as we speak down to vacuum. Once it uh, reaches vacuum, there'll be a series of leak checks and communications checks between the two cosmonauts and the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center. We ran down all of the tasks uh, earlier uh, that uh, will be involved in today's spacewalk that's expected to last somewhere around six hours and 40 minutes, probably will go a bit longer than that uh, when it's all said and done. We have an animation of about three and a half minutes in length narrated by Mitch Harger of the EVA community uh, that will outline all of the work to be conducted today by Shkaplerov and Dubrov. Russian Spacewalk 51. Transmit push button is released. Copy. That's good. And what is the current? Uh, uh, and again, uh, thanks to Mitch Harger for his narration of uh, the spacewalking tasks uh, to be undertaken today by Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov. Today's spacewalk again designed. Uh, with a variety of work outside uh, the Prishal module, Prishal, the Russian word for pier or port, 
launched uh, just before Thanksgiving last year, arriving at the International Space Station to uh, link up uh, to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Uh, the node module, or Prishal, uh, weighs about five tons, 16 feet long, eight and a half feet in diameter, with five docking ports available for future Russian visiting vehicles. The International Space Station currently flying 260 statute miles above the Earth over the South Atlantic, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly track that will carry it across uh, the east coast of Africa and Madagascar out into the Indian Ocean. All of uh, the station systems are operating uh, in fine fashion, no issues, and that uh, will help facilitate all of the work uh, to be uh, conducted outside of the Russian segment of the station by Shkaplerov and Dubrov throughout the course of the day today. You see on the uh, right side of the Poisk module uh, that long boom, that is called the Strela boom. It's a 52-foot-long uh, telescoping boom that uh, will be used by the cosmonauts to make their way from the Poisk module down the length of the multipurpose laboratory module, or Naoka, down to Prishal, where they will uh, spend the entire oh, spacewalk um, today conducting what, all of the work uh, to uh, install handrails, docking targets, uh, to route uh, cables for the television system that will integrate Prishal into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, as uh, we note uh, on all Russian spacewalks, uh, the elapsed time of a Russian spacewalk is measured a bit differently than it is for a U.S. spacewalk. Russian spacewalk uh, elapsed time is measured from hatch open to hatch close. A U.S. spacewalk uh, conducted out of the Quest airlock is measured from the time that uh, crew members place their suits on battery power inside the Quest airlock to the time that they're back inside the airlock following their spacewalk and go to repressurization. So we'll be standing by for confirmation from the Russian uh, flight control team uh, as to the time of hatch open that will uh, mark uh, the beginning uh, of uh, today's spacewalk, again, the 246th spacewalk, in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. So, after the pre-breathe, uh, we will drop the pressure to 12 millimeters. Uh, yes, uh, that is correct. Peter, Anton, uh, Anton Peter, uh, Vladimir is here and he would like to take up with you regarding the upcoming uh, EVA uh, while the pre-breeze uh, is um, ongoing. Okay, sounds good. Um, hello uh, on this um, excellent EVA day uh, to you. Uh, yes, good day. Uh, Peter, uh, I have a request for you. Well, rather a recommendation regarding the activity in audible. Yes, go ahead. So, if I understand it correctly, uh, it, the 
Nakring is in the uh, open position now. Ah, uh, yet. No, no, no. The the limiter that's on the red, uh, it is uh, in the uh, trash bag. I put it there to make sure that it's not floating. And uh, and the neck, it's uh, going up, right? A copy, and are you going to uh, secure the bag uh, folded or not? I don't think that uh, there are any restraints here, uh, but uh, the uh, joint of the cover, I don't think I can just open it. Well, you can actually install it near the opening, near uh, the uh, – you, you can use a pin to install there. Well, yes, there is a pin, but I don't think that uh, it can uh, secure the actual trash bag uh, cover. Well, it should go into the socket, and in this position, the cover is not uh, folded. It uh, should be in the uh, open position. I do not see this slot or socket. Well, of course, it's uh, hard to uh, see anything at this point. Well, uh, if we're supposed to uh, use it for the activity, I guess uh, it should be visible. Because the uh, cord the cord that's holding that uh, pin is rather short. Well, my question is the following. I just want to make sure that while you're moving, while you're translating, uh, make sure that uh, the trash bag uh, opening uh, or back is not opened. And if it's not, then you can just uh, continue. Or you can go ahead and uh, uh, close it off. Okay. Well, and I guess I don't really have any other options because once I open it, then uh, it increases in size and uh, it could interfere with the uh, translation. So I would have to uh, stop and um, correct that. Uh, yes, that's uh, uh, great. I'm glad you understand it. That's uh, what I wanted to discuss with you. And one more thing uh, for both of you uh, regarding the uh, bundle. You have set it up. This is Mission Control Houston as uh, the depressurization of the Poisk uh, airlock on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station continues this view of Poisk from an external camera on the truss of the station. You're hearing uh, one of the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow talking to Pyotr Dubrov uh, as they review some of the uh, procedures and uh, review the equipment that uh, he and Anton Shkaplerov, the Expedition 66 commander, will be taking outside of Poisk uh, to conduct uh, their spacewalk today, uh, which will be the outfitting of the uh, newly arrived uh, Prishal node module. Uh, Twitter can egress, and then Anton uh, can um, relocate it uh, so that it is closer to the hatch if it's not there. And then, uh, uh, Peter, you can use the retractable tether that you have already set up. And then uh, you will use the hooks 
for uh, uh, the hit uh, for, for the kit uh, for the e EVA bundle and uh, uh, the retractable tether uh, hook. Inaudible. Uh, so Peter will move forward with the bundle, and once it is taken out fully, then uh, Anton uh, will tether it to the nearest handrail. Well, uh, still it would not be that easy because uh, I would have to be not just perpendicular to the hatch, but uh, perpendicular and uh, I'm supposed to also move back uh, above the uh, Strela boom. Uh, so I uh, assume that I would be able to move underneath the boom, but if I uh, drop my uh, tether on the bundle, uh, on the bundle tether, then I guess it would be uh, more complicated because while Egressing. I would have to move closer to the hatch to make sure that the kit is perpendicular to um, the hatch plane. Otherwise, it will be uh, moving away from me, and I would have to follow it. So anyways, uh, uh, I guess I'd have to uh, think about how to um, go about it. And uh, Peter, uh, with that, I have one more proposal. Uh, you will uh, turn towards the hatch, and you can take uh, the hook from the wheel and use it to uh, tether the uh, bundle. Right away. Uh, yes, uh, to make sure that he can ingress. And uh, the uh, small uh, hook would be on the actual bundle. Uh, uh, so are you sure it's not confusing? Well, so are we talking about the um, real tether now? So, I don't think that this option is going to work because uh, Anton uh, will be uh, translating first to the side that's closer to the uh, work area. And in that case, it would be uh, more convenient for me to rotate this uh, bundle. This is Mission Control Houston. Inside uh, the Poisk module on uh, the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, Expedition 66 Commander Anton Shkaplerov and Flight Engineer Pyotr Dubrov are suited up in their Orlan spacesuits as uh, they uh, continue to uh, watch the systems uh, during the depressurization of Poisk down to vacuum. That will be followed by communications checks and then the opening of the hatch to mark the official start of today's spacewalk, the 246th in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Today's work uh, will be uh, all about the Prashal module, outfitting it uh, for its integration into the Russian segment of the station following its arrival and automated docking to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module in late November of last year. And uh, it's not going to be the best or most convenient configuration. Yes, uh, uh, Peter, you're right. Uh, you are on the Strela boom, and uh, you're going to attach your uh, safety tethers, change your position. Uh, then uh, you will tether uh, the uh, bundle. <coughs> and uh, uh, the reel will actually allow you to uh, take out the EV bundle.
Ребята, как нас сейчас слышно? Guys, how do you copy? Uh, we had a short LOS. Right now we copy loud and clear, clear EVA1 and EVA2. Ну, в общем-то, хорошо, надо вывести укладку. Okay, so you will have to take the bundle out. And uh, to have to exchange the tethers. And uh, eventually, if you won't be able to keep them, you will have to extend their lengths. And then afterwards, maybe you will see whether you will be able to make them shorter somehow uh, on the rails. Okay, sounds good. So just don't focus on this task. This is the most important thing. The most important thing is you have to uh, use your safety tethers so that uh, you are safe. Петр Антон, у нас на счетчиках. Петр Антон, so how long uh, is it till the end of the pre-brief on the timers? Unintelligible. Nine point five. Copy. And what about the current spacesuit uh, pressure on uh, via UDSK? Zero point zero eight for both. Copy. Sounds good. Peter, you can prepare uh, cue card six, step nine, the drop of pressure uh, to twelve millimeters. The cue card is ready. And I think we can actually perform step nine right now. Yes, it's a go to perform step 9.1 for you. Copy. So I am checking the new more valve. It is off, OFF. The main regulator prime and the tank prime. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're looking at a variety of views. Uh, 
to support today's spacewalk that is upcoming by Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov. The uh, Russian flight controllers in Korolyov outside of Moscow at the Russian Mission Control Center are in charge of today's activities. Down uh, in the lower left-hand box here in Mission Control in Houston at the Johnson Space Center, the flight control team will be following along and also supporting uh, the work that is uh, ongoing with the other members of the Expedition 66 crew involving research throughout the course of the day today, while Shkaplerov and Dubrov are working uh, around the Prashal module, uh, conducting all of the tasks associated with today's excursion. The Poisk module on the right side of your screen is where uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov are inside the airlock. They're in the uh, process of depressurizing that airlock down to vacuum. Once uh, they get there, uh, they'll do a final leak check, a final check of their suit systems on their Orlon spacesuits, and then they'll be given the green light uh, to open the hatch to Poisk uh, that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. The timer shows zeros, uh, so the, then the pre-brief will be completed, and you will proceed to step 9.2. Six point five minutes is left. Copy, Peter, till the end of the pre breeze.
This is Mission Control Houston. At this hour, the International Space Station flying from southwest and northeast across the Indian Ocean, approaching the west coast of India. This view of the uh, Poisk module on the uh, space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, in which Anton Shkaplerov, the Expedition 66 commander, and flight engineer Pyotr Dubrov are suited up in their Orlan suits about uh, to complete the depressurization of the Poisk airlock before conducting leak checks of their Orlan suits and communications checks with Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in preparation for the opening of the hatch to Poisk that will mark uh, the beginning of today's spacewalk, which uh, should last about six hours and 40 minutes, uh, perhaps a bit longer, as they work uh, their way through a series of tasks to install handrails, docking targets, to move a television camera on the Prashal module, as well as uh, installing a, a number of antennas that will be used uh, to outfit uh, Prishal, the node module that launched uh, last November to the International Space Station, arriving on November 26th of last year, docking uh, to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Prishal, uh, which has five docking ports, uh, is going to be put in action uh, to serve as a port of call for future Russian visiting vehicles beginning uh, with the launch in March, on March 18th, of the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft with three Russian cosmonauts on board, led by uh, that Soyuz commander, Oleg Artemyev, the three Russians uh, to join the Expedition 66 and 67 crew uh, during uh, that portion of the International Space Station's time on orbit. Guys, at the end of the brief, so what do the, the, the counters say? 15 seconds. Copy. The uh, two cosmonauts inside Poisk are completing uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen, cleansing nitrogen out of their bloodstreams. This is a uh, routine activity that is designed to prevent uh, any condition known as the bends or decompression sickness from setting in as they step out into the vacuum of space a short time from now. We confirm. Okay, so now uh, proceed to cue card step 9.2 and you start before a minute on my go. Okay, we're standing by for your go. All right, Piotr, it's a go to continue, so go ahead. Copy, 9.2. So we are putting O2 flow sector into injector and uh, start the timer. Yes, I have injector on. Now five minute count has started. Copy. And so can you see the timer indication? Yes. And in the uh, right upper corner, and the pressure. I'm opening. KSDSO valve. Yes, it's a go. So until 12. Copy. So MRM2 pressure, uh, with MRM2 pressure, 335. Uh, okay, so uh, after every 30, 40 um, millimeters, could you please report the pressure? Okay, so on MV it is 500 right now. Copy. 0.4 uh, for EVE2. Copy. I have 037, EVA-1, copy. Uh, 450 on MV pressure, 039 for EVA-2, 038 for EVA-1, copy. 
Orlan pressure 039 for EVA2 is Orlan pressure. Copy. Давление в отсеке 350. 350 is in the module and 038 Orlan pressure. Copy 038 for both EVA1 and EVA2. Copy. It's a go to open KSD2 valve. So the Inspection is successful. Okay, so I'm opening as the two valve. Copy. As the two valve is open. The pressure is 318 and 038 uh, Orlan pressure, and the same for. Through the uh, Russian interpreter that you're hearing, uh, uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov are currently uh, providing uh, technical information on the uh, parameters inside the Poisk module airlock uh, that you're seeing on uh, your screen from an external camera on the truss of the International Space Station. We're expecting uh, the spacewalk to get underway uh, a few minutes from now. It'll be marked uh, by the opening of the hatch to Poisk, the official uh, EVA elapsed time for a Russian spacewalk, again measured from hatch open to hatch close. So, 150 millimeters in the module and 45 seconds left for injector operation. Copy. Sounds good. Zero thirty-eight. Uh, for EVA2, it's the scout or land uh, pressure. Copy. One hundred and twenty in the module, or zero thirty-eight for both. Or land pressure is zero thirty-eight for both. Copy. The time is up. So we are deactivating injectors. Copy and please uh, check that LED is not illuminated anymore. Uh, EV1 and EV2 uh, LEDs are not illuminated. And uh, also monitor that um, it is secured. Yes. Of. It is secured for both. Copy. And the next event. Возможно, что придет сообщение, что при давлении 20 миллиметров перевести БСС в 20 ВКД. So you might receive a message. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, while we wait uh, for the start of today's spacewalk by Shkaplerov and Dubrov outside of the Poisk module, they'll be making their way down to the uh, Prishal node module. We uh, have other work that's ongoing aboard the International Space Station as the USOS crew members are currently uh, involved in the packing of equipment. And uh, over the next uh, 48 hours, we'll be involved in the uh, stowage of critical science experiments uh, aboard uh, the Cargo Dragon vehicle that will be undocking from the International Space Station on Friday, January 21st. 
with uh, our coverage of uh, crew dra or cargo dragon's departure from the complex set to begin at 10:15 a.m. eastern time 9:15 central time the actual undocking itself is scheduled 25 minutes later at 9:40 a.m. central 10:40 a.m. eastern time that will send uh, the cargo dragon vehicle off uh, to a safe distance away from the space station where it uh, will uh, execute its deorbit burn and entry back into the Earth's atmosphere the following day on Saturday, January 22nd for a splashdown and uh, a return to Earth of all of that uh, critical science uh, hardware uh, that the crew has been working on over the past uh, several months. The uh, splashdown itself will not be televised on NASA TV. We will update uh, the progress of Cargo Dragon's return to Earth on uh, the ISS blog on our website. Skaplerov and Dubrov, meanwhile, have uh, completed uh, the pre-breathe of pure oxygen to cleanse nitrogen out of their bloodstreams waiting for final procedures to begin uh, to set the stage for the opening of the hatch on the Poisk module and uh, the uh, two cosmonauts leaving the Poisk module. They'll install a protective ring around the hatch to Poisk uh, to provide protection against any inadvertent uh, micrometeoroid debris strikes that might occur. That's standard operating procedure for any spacewalk. Uh, out of the Russian segment of the station. Uh, let us stand by until the pressure is 20 millimeters to zero. And the uh, first out of the hatch will uh, be Pyotr Dubrov. He'll be wearing the Orlan suit, uh, bearing the blue stripes. Shkaplerov, uh, the ISS commander, will be wearing the Orlan suit with the red stripes. Dubrov will be first out, followed uh, a few minutes later by Shkaplerov. Twenty millimeters uh, is the pressure in the module. So O2 open EVA. Copy. What is the Odeska Orlan pressure? Zero point thirty six for both. Copy. Zero thirty six for both. We will uh, close case the two when the pressure is 12 millimeters. Crew members discussing their future actions.
Посеки 12 миллиметров. 12 миллиметров в модуле. Мы закрываем КС-2. Копим. КС-2 закрываем. И теперь я закрываю КС-2 СО. Guys, the depressed valve uh, so is closed and LED is not illuminated. So now uh, we'll uh, have to perform final leak check uh, for five minutes. So the increase should be uh, not more than two millimeters. And what about the MV pressure right now? Ten millimeters. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Word uh, now received that uh, the depressurization of the Poisk airlock uh, is complete, down to uh, the necessary uh, millimeter level uh, to provide a vacuum environment inside Poisk. Crew now will uh, go through several minutes of uh, leak checks and communications checks on their suits before they are given the formal go-ahead to open the hatch to Poisk that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. Петр, you can prepare a cue card number seven, step 11, Orlan transition to autonomous power. The cue card is ready. Хорошо. Sounds good, Петр. So after three minutes, what is the MRM2 pressure on MV right now, guys? Standing by for your report. Nine millimeters is the pressure copy. Nine millimeters. It is ten. Correction. One zero. One zero. Copy. Sounds good. This is Mission Control Houston uh, with the Poisk airlock uh, now down to vacuum. Final suit checks are being conducted by Anton Kaplarov and Pyotr Dubrov. They soon uh, will place their suits on internal battery power and then uh, 
The final step will be to open up the hatch to Poisk to start the clock running and mark the official start of today's spacewalk. As mentioned uh, earlier in our broadcast, uh, Shkaplerov uh, will be identified as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one wearing the suit with the red stripes. Pyotr Dubrov will wear the suit with the blue stripes as EV-2 or extravehicular crew member number two. This is the third spacewalk in Shkaplerov's career. The uh, last spacewalk that he uh, conducted was four years ago back on February 2nd, 2018 with Alexander Mazurkin to uh, swap out antenna components for the Zvezda service module's high-gain Lyra antenna. And that turned out to be the longest spacewalk in Russian spacewalk history, eight hours, 13 minutes in duration. So right now, uh, we're this will be the fourth spacewalk for Pyotr Dubrov. Copy, uh, working for step 11. This is the uh, second spacewalk for Expedition 66, uh, with two U.S. spacewalks in the offing in the March time frame that will be conducted uh, to continue preparations for the installation of the next set of augmented solar arrays on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station had to change out a component called a radiator beam valve module on the truss of the station. Let me read the whole thing so we released it. Uh, pressure and dependent power, and then we're activating the prime uh, pump fan. And I was going to disconnect. No, disconnect is later. It feels very cold. Can we set it a little bit warmer? Yes, I feel really uh, cold right now. So set it at three. Yes, it's just so cold. It's wintry. So it, uh, you will be on the co-op for another 15 minutes. Okay, sounds good. So next we're... Uh, turning off the fan, releasing the transmit, then switching independent power, and then turning on the uh, pump fan and transmit. And uh, the report uh, from the Russian flight controllers, uh, the suit checks are complete. Uh, the crew has placed their suits on the battery power. This uh, does not yet start the clock running on the official timer for today's spacewalk. That uh, will come momentarily when the hatch is open, and that will uh, start uh, the timing uh, for phased elapsed time, or PET as it is called, for this first spacewalk of 2022. IV2 is uh, switched. So backup, so backup pump and backup fan are on. Yes, I can confirm backup pump and backup fan are on and operating. Copy. And so, so, so backup pump and backup fan are the on. Anton. Okay, I got it. Okay, Anton continuing the uh, transition. Okay, sounds good. So we are in independent power. Okay, sounds good. So we're seeing that the backup pump and backup fan are on. Okay, right now front on the prime is on. Okay, so should we turn on the prime or backup at this time? Well, it would be great if, if after the transition you have the backup pump and backup fan on. 
So turn off and turn on. You need to turn off, wait a little bit, and then uh, restart uh, the backup assemblies. Okay. Okay, let me turn it off. Okay, turn it off and waiting. Sounds good. Anton, Anton, and uh, your prime transmitter is uh, pressed on, correct? Yes. Okay, sounds good. And what is the lower uh, line reading? Uh, 29 uh, decimal 6 and EV2 uh, 29 decimal 0. So you can continue operating on POV. Uh, we have the uh, tow, uh, released, tow mode released, so it should no longer be eliminated. Disconnecting electrical umbilical. EV2, copy. The first one is off. Uh, it's disconnected, yes, and closed. So you, uh, you close the MLI flap. Yes, I close the both connectors. Just making sure that the tether is not in the way. The first two uh, tethers are inside the MLI. Okay, copy, sounds good. I, I placed the, um, I sewed the electrical umbilical above the hatch, copy. Are you ready? So electric umbilicals are all ready. So you tucked it all away. Okay. N next, we're going to uh, disconnect. And we're going to uh, disconnect from the onboard umbilicals. This is Mission Control Houston uh, inside the Poisk airlock uh, that you see uh, on your screen. Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov are preparing to open up the hatch to begin uh, today's spacewalk, the first out of the International Space Station this year. Did it spray some water and stop? Yes, there was just a little sprinkle. Okay. Okay, copy. Well, that happens. I have IV-1 disconnected the uh, umbilical, uh, closed the MLI flap, so closing the um, umbilical uh, Once uh, the hatch is open, uh, the first uh, 
cosmonaut out of the Poisk airlock will be uh, Pyotr Dubrov, followed uh, in short order by Anton Shkaplerov. Both uh, will be equipped with helmet cameras for an up-close and personal view of today's activities. Shkaplerov's helmet camera number is 22. Dubrov's helmet camera number is 16. AV2 on the MOI is closed, O2 closed, so I should get the closed message, O2, uh, setting O2 closed, set it, okay, uh, what is your current pressure per disc? Uh, zero three six uh, for eighty two, zero thirty, zero three zero for EV one. And the pressure in the prime uh, tank. Uh, what is uh, the reading per? The International Space Station currently uh, traversing across the Pacific Ocean from northwest to southeast at an altitude of two hundred sixty statute miles, in an orbit inclined fifty one point six degrees to either side of the equator. The very best during your EVA run, and I'm um, going to give Vladimir the mic at this time. Okay, thank you. So we are receiving a go to open the hatch per results of the medical uh, parameter monitoring. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, I'm looking at the hooks. Okay, turning on the sublimators when we open the hatch. Guys, if you're ready, uh, we can start the EV hatch opening. Okay, I put the um, uh, cards with instructions away. Turning toward the uh, hatch, I have secured the tethers onto the uh, uh, handles, and I'm ready to open the hatch. Copy. I please monitor the condition of the cover of the EV hatch. Monitoring. Three. Two, three, four. All four screws are rotated out to to full stop. Uh, the latches on the uh, door hinges of the hatch are closed. Okay, I confirm. Copy. Uh, the key to open the. Um, the handle to open the hatch is in the operational position. Pulling out the uh, uh, handle. Velcro looks good. Uh, so the flag is in the tab is in the operating position. Okay, you can start opening. You can start opening the hatch. Okay, I set the uh, handle and I am ready to open the hatch. Copy. Uh, monitor how the rowers are going to come out. I see the rowers moving. 
And the tether on the handle is not very uh, convenient. The tether on this um, uh, hatch handle. The rollers are out. I confirm. Copy. The handle of the uh, pusher uh, push all the way uh, in the direction away from your body. One more time. What is the question? Manual pressure gauge reading? Well, the pressure is currently... Seven, seven millimeters, copy. So work with the pusher. Press on the pusher. I confirm. I'm holding on to the pusher. Five millimeters. Copy. Four millimeters. Copy four millimeters. Uh, is the um, hatch uh, resisting a little bit? Well, it does uh, feel springing, but we can try to open it. Three millimeters. Okay. It, the um, hatch is moving. Well, basically, the hatch is opening. I will prepare the tether. Hold on uh, to the tether hook, Anton. Okay, I got it. So is the hatch open? Yes, it is. So it is in the process of being opened. Copy. The kit is a little bit in the way. Okay, I secured it. What a, so you secured the tether hook. Copy. Can you open the um, uh, hatch a little bit more? Well, the kit is in the way. But can you push it uh, in the direction below me or below yourself? Yeah, we need to push it in the direction of our seat. I will try. Well, I think the desert is in the way there as well. Is it good? No. She's done well. No, the kit is still slightly outside the hatch. Something is not allowing the kit to move in this direction. Can you turn around and take a look, please? My tethers are over there.
Возможно, фал далеко назад. It's possible that the um, uh, tether is snagged far in the back. Uh, let me uh, close the uh, uh, hedge cover a little bit. Maybe we can lift this uh, corner a little bit. Okay, this way. Okay, you got it. Does it work uh, well? Yes, now the kid is no longer in the way. Now the protective ring. You're right, installing the protective ring. Uh, the tether, uh, my tether is wrapped around the swing arm. Okay. Okay, I got it. I am getting the ring. Copy. So opening and um, monitoring. So should I install it this way? Let's see how it goes. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, hatch is opened on the uh, Poisk module as planned. Anton Shkaplerov and uh, Piotr Dubrov are in the process of gathering uh, tools, tethers, and what is called an EVA bundle that has all of the equipment that they'll be bringing down uh, the Strela boom to the Prashal node module where they will be working throughout the course of today's spacewalk. We are waiting uh, for official word from the Russian Mission Control Center on the official start time of the spacewalk that is marked by hatch opening. So before we uh, give you a time, uh, we're going to stand by for a few more minutes and wait for an official time from the Russian controllers. I think your mark is a little bit higher. The black, the black mark is higher. Okay, I didn't see it. Okay, you got it on your side. I will I'll work it on this side. You got it. The protective ring is installed. Copy. Meanwhile, uh, as we wait uh, for Russian flight controllers to provide us with an official start time uh, of uh, the spacewalk, the hatch is open and uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov have installed a protective ring around that hatch uh, to protect it uh, from any uh, inadvertent uh, strikes by micrometeoroid uh, debris. Uh, during the time that the hatch is open for today's spacewalk that is expected to last between six hours and 40 minutes and seven hours in duration. Pyotr Dubrov uh, is uh, currently in the process of emerging from the hatch, beginning the fourth spacewalk in his career. Okay, that's great. He'll be followed in short order by Anton Shkaplerov, uh, now in the third spacewalk of his career. Copy. Inaudible. Uh, yes, it's time we turn on the sublimators. And where are with the sublimators? Yes, you can go ahead and turn on. Uh, you can turn on the sublimators. I, as far as I understand, uh, one of the EVA operators is addressing. Yes, my head is out. I am sitting my 
uh, worm code uh, handled to position six. Can I turn on mine? Yes, Anton, go ahead and turn yours on. Okay, got it. I'm going to turn it on now. AV2 uh, turned on the sublimator. I have the message to all. Uh, the, it's going to um, start, uh, the sunrise is going to start in about two minutes. Copying. I took both uh, feather hooks out. I am egressing, copying. I am outside. I do see the Strela boom. And let me check the translation path. And guys, we have a go to turn on your helmet camera. And uh, this is Mission Control Houston, the Russian uh, flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov have uh, provided the official start time for today's spacewalk at 6.17 and 31 seconds a.m. Central Time. 6.17 and 31 seconds Central Time. The 246th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly maintenance and upgrades underway. And you see outside the hatch of the Poisk uh, airlock, Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, or extravehicular crew member number two. He has emerged uh, along with equipment that he will uh, take down uh, the length of the Strela boom that is uh, in the foreground just in front of him, all the way down to the Prashal module, which is uh, mated uh, to the Nader or Earth-facing port of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Right. I have managed to get under and past the Strela boom. Good job. And I'm prepping the bundle for now. Right, and uh, let me secure myself here a little bit. To around the end effector. Let me see how I can get the bundle from you. And uh, with uh, Pyotr Dubrov outside of the Poisk uh, airlock, soon to be joined by Anton Shkaplerov, the Expedition 66 commander, the International Space Station moving from northwest to southeast across the South Pacific, entering an orbital sunrise at an altitude of 260 miles above the Earth. Again, uh, today's uh, spacewalk uh, designed to outfit and integrate the Prashal module into the Russian segment of the International Space Station with the installation of handrails. All right. With the uh, mating of uh, we can communications cables uh, that will uh, provide uh, 
CORE's automated rendezvous system information between Prishal and the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, the installation of uh, docking antennas and docking targets, the movement of a television camera from one uh, port to another on Prishal that will facilitate uh, television views of arriving uh, Russian visiting vehicles in the future. This view of uh, the Russian uh, Mission Control Center in Korolyov, outside of Moscow, where today's spacewalk is being uh, choreographed. Okay. Stand by, let me hand it over to you. So you want to hand the whole bundle over to me? Here in uh, Mission Control in Houston, uh, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers on console working in concert with their Russian counterparts across the ocean in Korolyov. The Orbit 2 team is led by uh, Flight Director Diane Daly. And uh, on the right box in the foreground of your picture, joined on console by spacecraft communicator Amy Dill today, primarily talking uh, to the other crew members on board the station as they follow the work uh, being conducted by Shkaplerov and Dubrov outside of the Russian segment of the complex. The segment? Yes. Okay, and we can disconnect it here. All right. You got it. Yes. Could you lower it a little bit? I have disconnected the tether, and I'm holding it. Copy, and I'm starting to guide it out, guide the bundle out. Uh, watching out for the handrails, it's a little bit, the handrails are in the way. Okay, uh, let me secure it to myself then, for now. Uh, monitor how it's getting out. Okay. Something's catching it at the bottom. Let me see. Oh, wait. It's, a t it's the tether. Hold on. Let me dive a little bit and disconnect it. Now nah, it's a shorter route for me. Let me do it. Sounds good. I've got the bundle. Just a tad too short. Can't reach it. Um, I guess I'll have to do it. Yes, you do it. And uh, let me um, grab my tether. Okay, and I'll do my best. Pretty big. And it's not being cooperative. Okay, I have disconnected the tether from myself, and I'm getting out of your way. Okay, and I am pulling. I got it. So can you reach it now? Let's dive a little bit down there. Let me um, switch to the boom. 
Yay! It's out. We see it, guys. And we are watching you from uh, the USOS cameras. Copy. Anton. Uh, do you see that there is, looks like there are specks of dust floating out of the air, uh, airlock? Oh, something floating out. Tetya, I'm going to disconnect the tether and I'm going to connect, reconnect it to the round uh, handrail. Hold it for now. Got it. I've got it secured. Copy. Now, let's find a good place to get it secured so that uh, uh, it's not in the way for you. Well, let me uh, secure it to the sliding ring. Okay. Can I egress? Can I get out from here? Yes, Anton, you can. Yes, Anton, you can. Just be careful because there is this tether connecting the bundle going right above your head. So, and we can actually untie, um, untie the tether and um, turn the bundle in the direction of the Estrella boom. Okay, I've got one tether on the outer side of the um, handrail. Copy. We see it. And I am uh, disconnecting my tether with extenders for now, and it's connected to the sliding ring. And once you are ready, could you please uh, grab that uh, second tether? So what do you suggest? Should I do it from here, or do you want me to get out first? Well, it's up to you. Wow, that's looking pretty sunny, and it's uh, clear and cloudless weather today. Where do you want me to get myself uh, to get it secured? Well, to the kit, uh, to the bundle, maybe. And then to the Estrella boom. Let me grab it here. Okay, I have, I disconnected it. I mean the tether. Okay, I got it. I got the bundle. And I have the bundle secured now. And I'm also holding it for now. Great, I have it secured. Wonderful. Um, Anton, I'm turning the bundle around. Uh, here is the French hook. And we need to kind of stretch it a little bit so that it's sitting tightly. Anton, Piotr. Go ahead. When you get a chance, could you please make sure that the switch for the heating 
And cooling of the suits is in the neutral position when you get a chance, of course. Okay, I am turning on Esther uh, number two, and the um, hot, cold hand switch. The temperature control handle is in the neutral position. So is it in the neutral position? Yes, make sure it's for both. And I am turning on uh, the... Um, heating and cooling system and putting the handle uh, in the neutral position. This is for Anton. So we have the active thermal control system on. We copy. Thank you, Anton. Okay. Uh, the kit is secured to the sliding ring with one side and with another to the um, – it is secured to the tether. Great. And I am um, moving on from uh, the uh, workstation. So did you secure the bundle uh, with the hook to – the tether uh, that's on the Strela boom? Yes, that's what we did. So just beware that the tether is going to extend a little bit as the boom extends. We actually do have a question about the length, and uh, we may, maybe we can uh, connect it to the STU. Uh, but it may be too long um, and too loose to keep it there, so um, maybe uh, the safety transport device is not really the best. Okay, let's uh, um, switch it over there, and I can give you the French hook from the uh, bundle, and I will... Uh, connect to the STU so that it's um, secured safely and comfortably. Anton, could you please turn off uh, your active thermal control system? Because it's looking like we are freezing you out of the suit there and uh, We'll have to switch to manual control. So please set the temperature controls uh, at one. Okay, I set the temperature control at uh, at, uh, at one, and uh, so the manual temperature control is at one, and the active thermal control system auto mode is off. Copy. And I wanted to give you this French hook from the bundle so that you would have it a little bit closer. And I will um, connect it to STU then. And let's this is Mission Control Houston. And I think there is plenty of... Um, 25 uh, minutes into today's spacewalk, Anton Shkaplerov at the top of your screen wearing the suit uh, with the red stripes, Pyotr Dubrov at the bottom of your screen as they are now uh, preparing uh, the Strela boom. This is... Uh, the Russian word for arrow, that's the telescoping boom that enables uh, the cosmonauts uh, to move uh, from one module to another, in this case down uh, the length of the Russian segment of the International Space Station and across uh, the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module to the Prushal node module that is docked to the Earth-facing port of Naoka where today's uh, spacewalk activity will be conducted. The first order of business uh, will be for uh, Dubrov and then Shkaplerov to move down Strela to the work site uh, with uh, the so-called EVA bundle. That's uh, basically the package of equipment that will be used uh, uh, to install handrails, cables, antennas, and to move uh, a television camera from one port to another on Prushal. 
all designed uh, to integrate uh, the node module into the Russian segment for future operations and the arrival of future Russian visiting vehicles, the first of which to dock to Prishal scheduled for mid-March with the arrival of the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft and three Russian cosmonauts led by Soyuz Commander Oleg Artemyev. my side? Well, your side of the Strela boom. Okay. Well, actually, the best way is to um, stick to the FGB side. Right. But, oh, maybe from the side of the SM, well, the side of the SM is a no-go. We have the bundle here. Do you want us to move it over to the other side? All right. The um, STO here is um, rotating. The translation ring is rotating here, so... I'm going to just push it lightly with my hand, and it's going to change sides. It sounds like a plan, and I can uh, reconnect my safety tether to that new side. All right, we've got the safety tether right there. Wonderful. This is like, this is going too well. Guys, we do have a request, though. Could you please turn off and then turn your helmet cameras on back again? Are you talking about all of the cameras, Moscow? All of them. Wow. Mine is off or whatever. One of them is off. So low um, and high fidelity. Um, Camera is off, and I'm turning them on. High-definition camera is on. Low-def camera is on as well, and the LED is illuminated. Piotr Moscow copies. Thank you. That's the same for me. No idea why. Okay, it is on one of them. And I have switched the cameras. Okay, and do you see the LEDs? Um, uh, are they illuminated? Yes, they are. Copy, thank you. This is Mission Control Houston uh, regaining our communications signal after a brief handover between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. The two cosmonauts, Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov, are outside of the Poisk airlock. Shkaplerov uh, at the bottom of your screen, or actually now on the top of your screen, uh, wearing uh, the suit bearing the red stripes. And uh, you see all the equipment uh, that they have uh, attached to the Strela boom, the uh, long boom uh, that uh, connects modules uh, between uh, the Russian uh, okay. segment of the International Space Station. They'll be making their way down from the Poisk module all the way down the length of uh, the multipurpose laboratory module to its base, to which uh, the Prushal node module is docked on the uh, space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. 
the uh, Prashal module on the earth-facing side of uh, the Russian segment. Five tons, 16 feet long, eight and a half feet in diameter with five docking ports as uh, the work site for today's activities. Baishkaplarov and Dubarov uh, for the installation of handrails. They'll be removing uh, thermal covers from those handrails, mating uh, navigational antenna communications cables and installing docking targets for the future arrival of Russian visiting vehicles to Prishal. Okay, I am ready to open up the French hook that's securing the grapple fixture. And you have a go. Please secure the French hook to the ring that's next to it there. And I'm going to secure to the um, safety tether. It sounds good. Anton, you are moving along um, the pitch axis. Copy. Can you verify that um, the bundle is secure? If I turn around, then yes, I see that uh, the uh, safety tether is um, tight. It's not being caught by anything, and the handle is primed. Okay, I am ready for the rotation. Going up along the um, clockwise. Copy. And we see the rotation, the movement. And it's probably better like this. Tetya, do you want to move a little bit more? Well, you will have to get over the target, and you probably can see it better than I do. I do see the handrail that I need to get to. Do you see the handrail and the handle from there, Anton? Something's rotating on Columbus. Looks like an antenna. Yes, it's an experiment or something. So, are you ready? Yes, let's roll. You got the handle? I got the handle. And you are turning to the right. Correct. Copy. And you can't see the handrail, Anton, can you? I can see the handrail, but not the uh, number. Well, it's the only one here, so not too many choices. So it's like a um, square ring, like a handle. 
I see that um, silverish antenna right, a little bit to the right of it. And our first view from helmet cameras, uh, Anton Shkaplerov, uh, his helmet camera bearing the number 22, Pyotr Dubrov. You'll be seeing views from his helmet camera, number 16, in the uh, ghostly figure on the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Shkaplerov 22, Dubrov 16. They're setting up all of their equipment uh, and their tethers before they make their way down the Strela boom to the Prashal node module where they uh, will begin the work to install uh, several handrails that will facilitate future spacewalk activity. This is the first uh, of a number of spacewalks associated with uh, today's outfitting of Prishal to integrate it into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Subsequent spacewalks planned for the spring, summer, and fall uh, to install and prepare uh, the European robotic arm for its use outside of the Russian segment of the station, uh, part of which will be used uh, to relocate and deploy uh, a radiator uh, for heat dissipation from uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module uh, to relocate a workstation outside of Naoka and uh, to ultimately outfit uh, the airlock for the multipurpose laboratory module, giving uh, the Russian side a number of options for airlock use, not only from the Poisk module, but also for the multipurpose laboratory module uh, for future spacewalks for the International Space Station activities. Move to the left, yes. Lower me a bit and to the left so that I could check what's going on with the antennas and see uh, the FGB cameras. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Move a little bit to the left now. Moving to the left. Copy. Movement confirmed. And now down. And uh, I, the boom is moving. Copy. The boom is moving. Slow down a little bit. And we need to extend it by about 5 or 10 centimeters. Sounds good. Just a little bit. Guys, you've been working for 40 minutes. All right. I'm securing the French hook. Okay, so I have secured it uh, to the handrail uh, 4100, 4100. Copy. So I am extending the tether. You know, you should uh, raise the boom a little bit uh, along the pitch axis. Raise it a little bit? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so that the tether uh, is straight now it is straight okay so it is secured now I mean the tether copy guys and I am transitioning to MLM that's correct Piotr 
Контролируешь лебедку. And please monitor the U.S. safety tether or reel. I can see it. And the lanyard is secured, attached. Sounds good. Okay, so they have A good to view of the uh, strela boom, strela, the Russian word for arrow, as uh, the cosmonauts uh, prepare to make their way down uh, to the Prashal node module on the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. We are 42 minutes into today's spacewalk that uh, should last at least six hours and 40 minutes, probably longer. A good wide view now of the Russian segment of the station at the aft port on the right side of your screen of the Zvezda service module is the ISS Progress 79 cargo craft. The uh, Zvezda service module, uh, which is the centerpiece of the Russian segment of the station, having launched in uh, July of 2000 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome to the International Space Station. ...of the installation until the eclipse, guys. On the opposite side of uh, where Poisk is located, is the Rosviet module that is attached uh, to the Zarya module on the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment. Docked uh, to the Rosviet module is the uh, Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft that Anton Shkaplerov, Pyotr Dubrov, our two spacewalkers for today, and NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei will use as their ride home on March 30th completing for Van de Heij and Dubrov what will be a 355-day mission, the longest single space flight in U.S. astronaut history. Anton, you know, your safety tether should not be tethered to the boom. Uh, the handrails are the best variant for that. Okay. So I secured it to the handrail. Uh, good job. Well done. Don't forget uh, uh, the bundle, you know. So also it's a no-go to attach the bundle to uh, the boom, correct? Okay, so should I start translation? Yes. Антон, it's a go. I can see some sensors here. This is Piotr for EV2. Антон, so the bundle uh, is retracted by itself, so to say, bit by bit. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so it, it will gradually move by itself after you. Until module um or node. You know, uh, the Earth is absolutely fantastic today, beautiful. Peter, if you have a chance, you can um, shoot a short video. I will try that. No, Anton uh, is against the sun, so it's not the very best view. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you can uh, take selfie, actually.
So I secured uh, to the uh, mobile ring and uh, the bundle is here, so I am releasing the mobile ring. Yes, it's a go. This is Mission Control Houston, another good view, a wide view of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. On the right, uh, mated uh, to the aft end of the Zvezda service module is the ISS Progress 79 cargo craft. And in the foreground of its solar array is the large Lyra dish antenna. This was the antenna that Anton Shkaplerov and Alexander Mazurkin worked on on February 2nd. 2018, four years ago, in what uh, up to this point has been the longest Russian spacewalk in history, eight hours, 13 minutes. Shkaplerov joined Alexander Mazurkin outside to replace uh, antenna components for that Lyra antenna that you see on the right side of your screen. Anton, uh, you know, you cannot uh, hold on anything, correct? Yeah, but uh, I'm doing my best. You know, the lanyard is not touching uh, the grapple fixture right now. Uh, it is uh, far away from it, so I can continue translation. I will uh, go on translating. Copy, Piotr. Peter, so you secured the bundle with two tethers to the ring, correct? So one tether is on the bundle. This is Anton. And I will swap it on the other side. Okay. Stop here, so I I had not uh, disconnected, have not disconnected it yet. 
So one tether was on the ring, and you were holding the other tether. But I actually connected it to the ring as well. So there were two tethers there. Okay, now I understand. And I secured only one tether. This is Piotr. Now I understand. So I'm moving the bundle. All right. So the antennas now. We uh, have momentarily lost our television signal from the International Space Station, again handing off communications between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system, and uh, we're getting that video back as we speak. The International Space Station uh, currently flying over eastern Africa, about to cross uh, over the Saudi Peninsula. 54 minutes into today's spacewalk, uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov just about on the timeline as they uh, are preparing uh, to move down the Strela boom with their EVA equipment and all of the uh, various uh, pieces of hardware that they'll be using to install handrails, communications cables, removing thermal insulation, r installing antennas, and docking targets on the uh, Prashal module. This uh, is the focus of attention uh, to bring Prashal into a uh, ready state and to integrate it into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Now the view from uh, Pyotr Dubrov's helmet camera, Dubrov in the fourth spacewalk of his career. Go ahead, Moscow. What about the thermal uh, system? How do you feel? Maybe you should uh, put it into uh, mode two? You mean uh, make it cooler? No, I think I'm fine. All right. Then leave it as is. If you feel uh, too warm... And now a view uh, then down uh, the length of the right. Naoka multipurpose laboratory module that arrived at the station back in July. And uh, at the top of your screen, there is Prashal that was launched on a Soyuz 2.1B rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on November 24th, arriving uh, for its automated docking to uh, Naoka on November 26th. That uh, is uh, where Dubrov and Shkaplerov will be working throughout the course of the day. You see at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, uh, Pyotr Dubrov uh, once again uh, working with the e so-called EVA bundle. That's uh, the bundle of equipment that uh, he will be bringing down the length of Naoka to Prishal where all of the work uh, for today's spacewalk will be conducted as we approach the one hour mark into today's excursion. Well, maybe it will be useful for those people who will come after us, who will have a, a, an EV after us. It will be useful information for them. Guys, the thrusters of the GAR are, are inhibited, so you have a go to translate further. Copy, it's a go to continue translating. This is EV2. Everything looks nominal. I 
Антон уже на пятке выступает, да? Антон, uh, is right behind you, uh, correct, Петр? Uh, yes. Ну, нормально. No, we are fine. Так, здесь неудобное место для прохода. So it's not very comfortable location for translation. So there are the base point here and the uh, handrail in between, but still better than at FGB. Антон, мы с тобой на третью, да? Смотрели удобно будет. Антон, мы были планировать на Я смотрю сразу на поручень УЭМа 45-70, по-моему, так. I think this handrail on the node is 45. I think I will have to go around uh, the docking node of the airlock. Well, but Piotr, this is the wrong direction. You should uh, go in a different direction. I will need to, to translate to the opposite side. Петр, it's the wrong direction. You should move in a different uh, in direction. It is pressurized adapter. It is just this, the beginning of the adapter. You have not yet reached the UM node uh, module. Yes, I, that's correct, Moscow. Okay, so now I understand the target here. There is a mirror here, even. A good view of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module at the International Space Station. At the top of your screen is Pyotr Dubrov uh, making his way toward the Prushal node module. At the bottom of your screen is uh, Anton Shkaplerov uh, so with the suit uh, with the red stripes, uh, the Expedition 66 commander. We're now one hour, two minutes into today's spacewalk by the two cosmonauts, the first spacewalk of the year outside of the space station. I have to decide whether I can translate here. You know, I think I should go around after all. Uh, we still have six minutes of installation 
until eclipse. Okay, six minutes of insulation before eclipse. You can hold down to the target if it is convenient uh, for you. So there are thrusters nearby. Will you be able to to uh, squeeze in between? Yes, uh, I can do that. I can translate here. You know, there is not enough of tether lengths here. Anton, if you have a chance, could you please do the power cycle of HECA camera on your helmet? Yes, I've done that. Unintelligible. Well, now I have to switch it on. Yes, I power cycled the hacker, so switched it off and on again. Copy. Anton. We, we do not receive the image right now. So, did you manage to translate? Yes, uh, on top of it. This target is in the way, very much so. Success. Uh, good job. Now, you can rest for a minute. You know, it would be nice to dismount uh, the install, this target, because it is very much in the way, an obstacle. And what if you uh, translate on the other side um, below the docking? Shkaplerov and Dubrov are receiving instructions from the Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. As you look uh, at the multispectral view, of an orbital sunset at 260 miles above the Earth with the International Space Station flying over southern Kazakhstan. Yes, it's not an easy location to translate.
Да, потихонечку входим в тень. Uh, so the eclipse is starting. Copy. И порочек 45, 80. Now the uh, handrail 4580. You know, it's just one handrail here. I cannot see the other one, so it's not easy to secure my tether here. Unintelligible. Антенны там еще между поручнями, которые стоят в короткий поручень 4579 ниже. You know, there should be a short handrail 4579, a little bit lower there, below the antenna. No, there is not enough length of the tether. I will have to secure uh, to only one handrail here, 4580. Uh, no other way talking at the same time. What did you say? Try to turn your body and uh, hold with the right hand to 4580 and uh, with your left hand to uh, hold the handrail on the UMA module. Okay, I'll try that. But you know, I have to stretch out my hands. Well, I can actually reach it. Well, of course, it will be better to reach with the hook of the tether. Okay, I got it. You got it? On this side? Yes, I can reach. And I just need to move over there. So you are, you need on, to be on the other side. Yeah, if I turn like this, then it's working out. Do you need any help? And there are... Positions where we can secure, or points where we can secure. We are currently on uh, plane four. Right. And we're translating to the left. 
Nope, guys, to the right. Fuck. You are right, to the right. Yes, guys, you need to move to the right. Hold on. Just uh, give me, get my bearings here. So you are moving on from zone four to zone three. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 14 minutes into today's spacewalk. A view of uh, Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov at the intersection of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module and at the top of your screen, the Prashal Node Module. Do you need to take a break? As they uh, no? are no, almost at their work site uh, that they will spend uh, the rest of the day. Uh, performing uh, a variety of tasks to uh, install handrails, remove thermal covers uh, from those handrails to mate uh, CORE's automated rendezvous uh, antenna systems and, com and communications cables to a variety of patch panels uh, between uh, Naoka and Prushal. They'll be installing uh, docking antennas they will mate uh, a camera communications cable for a, the relocation of a TV camera from one port to another on Prushal, and uh, will install uh, docking and docking monitoring targets on uh, the node module, all designed to prepare Prushal for the future arrival of Russian visiting vehicles. Unintelligible. Okay, you can move it towards your foot, and I can just move it up a little bit. Look, right under your right arm. Just uh, be careful with the handrail. It's it has an MLI cover over it. Once you are moving from zone four to zone three, just uh, be careful. And make, maybe Piotr can actually um, verify that the MLI is secure. Everything's secure. Right, I have it removed. Wow. Looking good, guys. But I hope that the button is, has been secured. Yes, of course, it's safety, safely tethered. It's a little bit difficult because there is a um, cable handrail restraint.
So you can reconnect to the same handrail. What did you say? I didn't copy. Use the same red, and you can secure the next cover to it. Yeah, I can do that. Secure it here, and then I have three more covers here. And we need to translate to there. Oh, yes, there is to the right. And we can cover it up with one cover first. And let me uh, walk back and then uh, and pick up the two remaining covers. And third one, zone three is to my right. That's where my legs currently are. Yes. Okay. Let me wrap up here. Okay. I am taking off the next cover. Yeah, I do see some threads here, and they tear pretty easily. Whew. That's quite a bundle here. And I am on Kekat 2, and I have the camera. And it's all tied up with... Um, different ropes and threads. So, Anton, you are next to the pressurized adapters. I am I am between the node module and the MLM at this connection point between. And I'm thinking that it's going to go down there. I don't think it's been designed to be torn off because honestly, I think they, whoever um, sewn that together, thought that it would be cut off rather than torn off. Well, if you could free up the handrail a little bit, that'll be fine. Yeah, I did. The handrail is clear of the MLI. I just pulled really hard on the cover. Uh, but I do have to say that it was um, sewn on pretty tightly. It was um, so they went over the perimeter and then uh, with it with tape and it was sewn on. So I had to tear it off. Maybe it's a big secret so that nobody could open up the window. Is it still closed?
This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 23 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. At the Prashal node module, Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov are in the early stages of uh, beginning work uh, to remove thermal insulation covers from handrails on Prashal. They will also be installing additional handrails that will be used uh, to facilitate future spacewalk activity at that work site. There is another rat's nest right here. Nothing but ties and knots. And I don't think I can tear this one off. They did put a lot of effort into this one. In addition uh, to the installation of handrails and the removal of thermal covers from existing handrails that Prashal was launched with, uh, the two cosmonauts will be installing uh, items called handrail limiters. Those are devices uh, that, is, that are designed uh, to prevent uh, tether hooks from getting caught on the handrails themselves. Maybe I can actually untie this knot with my hand. You can try. Mosk is unintelligible. All right, it's going to be plane three near the um, doggy node. And uh, let me think how we can position the bundle here the best way possible. Let me let me go down. I will be right across from you. I have one French hook, and I can secure it with either to this one or the one that ends in 31. Yeah, that may be easier. Let me go down a little bit, too. And I will be able to secure it. All right, I got it secured. Stand by one. Ah, uh, let me go a little bit underneath. We should have probably gotten the um, tether with an extension. Okay, uh, you are secured to 73.38, and I am on 73.35, and if I go a little bit more down, it's going to be pretty much picture perfect, sitting really nicely there. Okay, so... The tether's there, and I'm connecting to right there, right? Yes. Kind of snuck away from me somewhere, somehow. And I have a little bit of cold water and it's a little bit chilly. Tether. Your tether is uh, the tether is right in front of your hands and arms. Please avoid it to the best of your ability. I'm trying to move it a little bit. 
uh, so that I could see the tether. And I don't see it clearly. I want to unhook it, Anton. disconnect it. Anton, could you tell him? Yep, I ran over to him. Piotr, the tether is behind you, uh, above your left shoulder. So if you turn to the left, you will catch it. Or you can move a little bit like this. Turn, turn, turn. Let me let me just disconnect it. That's what I wanted to. Do you want like the whole tether? Yeah, the, I mean the big French hoop. Okay. Is it on a locker? Uh, yeah, it's. It is. Okay, you. It's free. Should I let it go? No, I can't find it. No, you, you, you won't be able to reach it. It's above you. Okay. Stay still. Give me your hand, and I will just give it to you. Okay. Eh, something like that. Okay. Your hand. Move your hand towards you. Towards you. Like no, like towards you, in front of you. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Should I let it go? Yes, please. Guys, make sure there is no ratchet wrench attached to one end. No. No. The ratchet wrench is where they should be. So that's just the hook, right? Yes. Copy. Okay. I need two retainers. And they are in the crew log bag. And I'm secured right here. The um, tether needs to stay on me. And could you remind me uh, where you want me to install the first retainer? It's going to be 7661. That's your first goal. Okay, this one is 65. Let me understand what um, where to move. Let me uh, install the retainer there so I could... Open up the MLI. Unintelligible. Moscow is unintelligible. Moscow, could you repeat your last? I just wanted to let you know that you should be moving to the left. Yes, that's where I'm headed. I am above handrail 75, and that's uh, where I'm going to stop and get my bearings to see where next I should move. Okay, I have one secured to me. Copy. So you are, you have it secured with the small rats, right? No, I have only a large rat left. And the wire went down a little bit there. Okay. Just well. I will be able to move only to the left. And I have the large 
right here. All right. I guess instead of installing, Piotr is unintelligible. Valoria, I got two cable guidelines. Okay. Now, tell us where we have those cable clamps on positions K3 and K4. Are they here? They are in uh, the area of plane 3. Is it K3 and K4? Yes, it's K3 and K4. Wow, I got K4. Got it. What about K3? It's probably a little bit even more to the left. And the camera should be here. Okay. Let me install everything, uh, install the clamps on K4. And I will have less stuff to drag around with me. That's a good plan. And I am moving towards 7661. That's the handrail. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 36 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Right. A close-up yeah. view of the uh, Prashal node module, 16 feet long, eight and a half feet in diameter, a five-ton component of the International Space Station that was launched last November and automatically docked, uh, as you see there, to the Earth-facing port of the uh, multi-purpose laboratory module, the Naoka module. So, for the cable clamp... Prishal uh, has five docking ports that uh, will be utilized for approaching uh, Russian visiting vehicles, the first of which scheduled uh, to arrive at Prishal for a docking in March. The Soyuz MS-21 vehicle carrying three Russian cosmonauts who will be part of the Expedition 67 crew. And now I need to twist it, right? Yes, and you need to... Anton Shkaplerov uh, in his third spacewalk of his career and uh, Pyotr Dubrov in the fourth spacewalk of his career are uh, about to uh, begin the process of installing handrail limiters. These are devices uh, designed to prevent tether hooks from getting caught on handrails. They also will be installing handrails on Prishal and removing thermal insulation from existing handrails on the node module. Yes. Then now you can uh, verify that the um, retainer for that hook is also... So if you take the cable clamp, press the button, lift it up a little bit, you can rotate it in any direction. And then, nope, the button doesn't want to be pressed and not cooperating. So maybe I twisted it a little bit too hard. And I am ready, this is Piotr, to install the uh, to install the uh, cable clamp on the 7661. 
Oh, well, now this button is just floating out from uh, its n nest. Is it, uh, is it uh, like literally it's not sitting there at all? No, it's just like floating out. Maybe you just tightened it too much. Okay, now I need to make sure that we don't lose it then. Okay, I have it secured. Now I need to untwist it or screw it out. Uh, go, uh, so the wing nut needs to be rotated uh, clockwise. Yeah. No, it's counterclockwise, like a usual screw. Is it moving up? Okay, if I'm rotating it clockwise, it's going more down and deeper, kind of sinking. So, to open it, I guess we need to, but we need to open it. Okay, Anton, one more time. The wing nut rotated a counterclockwise still hard stop and the pin uh, is going to pop up completely uh, it's a, these are reverse grooves right now I put it in correct so I have it um, I have it inserted and then I press on the little knob and it falls through it um, sits in the groove, and it's not holding there. Okay. Don't trouble the trouble until the trouble troubles you. Let it just sit. Okay. Now you just need to start rotating clockwise. But if it, anybody ever decides to move this, they should never, never press on that little knob. It doesn't um, sound like a very sound engineering decision. So, yeah, because if we want to uh, release that cable clamp fast, it needs this little knob shouldn't be so floaty away. Yeah, and you would just ha you would have to just press the button, and that's it. Okay, I have installed the. Um, Mine on uh, 70, uh, 61. Okay. And the sun is coming out and it's beautiful. Uh, and we're still fighting here. Now, have you installed it though? I have. Uh, are you still working on it? No, I have installed it. Everything's sitting really tightly. Good. Now you can start uh, translating. And if you want me to run any tests on it, I will experiment a little bit later. At the bottom of your screen is Anton Shkaplerov wearing the uh, suit with the red stripes as extravehicular crew member number one. He is working on uh, installing cable clamps that uh, will route uh, varying uh, docking uh, cables, navigational antenna cables, and TV cables uh, between Prishal and Naoka. At the very uh, top of your screen is Pyotr Dubrov. Basically, uh, the top of your screen representing the uh, nadir port of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, Brushal docked uh, to Naoka. It is at right at that docking port that the Soyuz MS-21 vehicle will link up on uh, in March, following its launch with the three Russian cosmonauts from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. This cover is stiff.
The sun is up. First sunrise. First sunrise. Wow, it's the second one because we were egressing. One hour, 44 minutes. We were egressing uh, during the eclipse. The sunrise uh, referred to uh, by the Russian flight controllers uh, through the interpreter is a sunrise over the Pacific Ocean as the International Space Station flies from northwest to southeast at an altitude of 260 statute miles. I'm currently near Ikatri. Copy. I removed the second cover. Well, and then there is one more, and then there are another three of them. Inaudible. And now I need to go back. Uh, could you stand by and wait at this particular location? Yes, copy. Anton, next. Anton, Anton uh, stand by. Wait for the winch. Peter, go ahead. For uh, one or two minutes, please uh, wait and uh, get a break in this particular area. And uh, in this case, also, uh, please examine the surface of the docking axial port. Okay, we'll do. I need to move a little bit in order to be able to rotate. And then, Tom, your next step is going to be, if you don't want to take a break and pause where you are, you need to take a tool with the um, uh, couple with the cables. Okay, I'm taking those. What's next? You need to take them to the location uh, where your is installed. Could you repeat your last? Should I take both cables or just the one? Speaking simultaneously. Anton, uh, you end up to need to take both. So I'm going to route it here. You will probably need to uh, reconnect it here. Well, you're going to secure it uh, with the wire ties on both sides. And I am supposed to made it to the MOM, and I was supposed to go over there, uh, but they asked me to stay here. And right now, it's uh, complicated, to, uh, difficult to inspect the docking assembly because it's on the other side, in, and there's no sun on the other side. Okay, then you can go back. Copy. Well, Peter, should I wait here? Or should I... So I need to take the cable and mate it to the MOM? 
So I need to translate in your direction. Are you going to translate over the kit? Well, I'm on the opposite side right now. I will. I now have to. You can move a little bit backward. Backward. Because then you're going to see the handrails that are covered um, by the covers. Okay, and then I'm going to translate in the opposite direction. Yes, that location is not very good for uh, grabbing the cables. Yes, I think we can do it. Uh, Peter, did you already start translating? Yes. So are you going to have to translate over myself, or do you need me to uh, clear the path for you? Okay, I'm going to reconnect. Uh, so for Alvaka? Well, first the cable. Uh, it's on the MLM. Uh, which FFP? Do you remember? I don't remember. It should be on the left. Yes, they're right here, 26. And to the left uh, from where you installed the uh, the cable attachments. So which ones do I need to demate here? You need to demate for connectors. Uh, that's where the cables are made to at this time. So do you need, um, do you have a view from any camera? Well, right now there is no calm. Could you repeat your last? Anton, there was in LOS. Could you repeat your last statement? I, I wanted to ask you if you see my camera view and whether I'm pointing in the right direction. We do not have a video at this time. Oh, okay. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 51 minutes into today's spacewalk. Shkaplerov and uh, Dubrov working just about right on the timeline for today, have completed uh, all of the installation and uncovering of the handrails on the uh, Prashal node module. Moving on now to uh, cable connections for the core's automated rendezvous equipment that uh, will be installed uh, on uh, Prashal to uh, facilitate uh, visiting vehicle approaches and dockings to Prashal in the uh, years to come. The crew was also uh, instructed uh, by Russian flight controllers to take a few minutes uh, to inspect the uh, docking interface on Prashal from which uh, the Progress delivery craft undocked following its uh, delivery of Prashal to the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module back uh, in November, the progress undocking from the very top of Prashal in this view, the Earth-facing view of the, the Prashal node module, that progress delivery craft undocking back in late December. They just want to make sure that that docking interface is clean and pristine for the arrival of the first uh, Soyuz crewed vehicle, the MS-21 vehicle, with three Russian cosmonauts scheduled to launch on March 18th. Yes, so Peter, it um, does make sense for you to translate uh, over the top. I can only receive the cable from here. So it should be uh, going to that plane, but I can put number three over there. 
And you will, n will not be able to translate over there. No. Okay, I'll try to get there from this side. I arrived at a very fortunate location. So which plates uh, do you have on, under your hand? FEPA 2 is the one I need right now, FEPA 1 as well. I'm moving to FEPA 1. 73.51 is the handrail. Yes, it is closer to the MLM. Yes, you will need to uh, translate along this radio handrail. You're holding on to it with your right hand. Did you pick up those cables? Oh, I didn't remove you didn't remove them. I thought you have them already. Okay. I am glad you reminded me uh, right now. So I'm going to pick them up. I thought you removed them and started translating with them. I had that thought to do that, but I, I tried to reach up uh, from where I am and I couldn't reach them. I uh, secured them on the retractable feather, so I'm removing the uh, uh, cable ties or wire ties. So are they secured to yourself? Yes, they are. Copy. Okay, I am translating. So the sun is uh, up, but it's not warming us up. Yes, true. So I am here in the uh, on the shady side. How should I translate next? I'm wondering whether I will be able to reach this. So, and then basically I'll have to translate back to the um, uh, kit on this handrail. Okay, yes, uh, uh, what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, keep the adjustable tether here. So 
And I am going to move this hook on this non-adjustable tether forward. Yeah, we're, here is the window. Where is the sun? Well, it's shining right into my eyes. Really? Yes, I see it. I uh, arrived at flight number 26. Yes, we see you. At the two-hour mark into today's spacewalk, a spectacular view of the Prashal node module. 260 miles above the Earth as the International Space Station flies over the uh, South Pacific, approaching the west coast of Chile. You will need to... This uh, orbit uh, will have uh, the International Space Station crossing uh, the southern tip of South America and back over the South Atlantic. Number four just wouldn't disconnect. Okay, I got it. Number three. I got it. I got this. Okay, number 26. It's open. Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov in the process of mating uh, CORE's automated rendezvous antenna cables between uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the Prashal node module. One, two, three, and four. Okay, copy. And I need to tie them up, correct? Yes, we need to put them away. But I'm going to move the new cable caps here. Can you give me the cable, or uh, is it too early? Well, I can start to translate, and then I can move ahead. Okay, let me try. If I secure it on the side that's where I need. So did the cable uh, translate there with you? Yes, it was in the kit. We just need to make sure um, you pay attention so it's secured externally. Yes, um, that was the way we packed the kit on purpose so it would stay. You need to see which side to go to. Okay, Anton, can you catch it? I see it. Where is it? Well, the GoPro is sticking out from the cover. I think we need to use scotch tape to uh, tape it in there. So I caught something. Uh, do I need to catch the other end? Uh, yes, I think uh, the, where the small cable is there. We need to secure it to something. What do you think? I think the idea is good. And I think I need to... Uh, take this uh, retractable tether and use it for its actual purpose.
так, вот тебе за две, за два те кольца, которые мы хотели, я закрепил. I secured it over here, the two spots we wanted at, uh, using the large red. Am I pushing against you? Well, just ever so slightly. I'm not going to fly away too far because I'm already secured with the retractable tether. I can insert the holder so it's not going to rotate too much. I I need to understand uh, that I uh, where I secure it so it's convenient for you. Do you see it? Right here uh, below you. I see it. Okay, here we go. What if I place it here? I think if I connect it here, it will be attached. What if I move it here? Peter, if I move it this way, is it good? I already secured it. Yes, I think it should be long enough. Or you can always pull it up. Okay, sounds good. It's pulling me up. It does match the uh, ball mark here. Okay, we're mating it. Twenty-six uh, one is uh, connected. Okay, copy. I am going to try to put the cap on the old one. I am going to move to the uh, uh, holder. Okay. And is everything good? I am going to where payoff one is. Okay, moving. Kappa one, copy. 26-2. So after, prior to removing the cover, secure it with red on uh, for one. Uh, prior to uh, disconnecting it, prior to removing it, secure it. And then you will need to uh, put away the trash. Are we, so are we, uh, do we need to bring the trash inside the station, or can we gently jettison it? Don't do it yet. When Peter turns around, you can place the trash in his trash bag. I am here opposite F F one. Copy. Do you see the video? Uh, we connected twenty six two. Twenty six three next. Okay, here are the cap. I secured the cover and the one with a small red. Okay, copy. Oh, 
that what you see? It's stitched on? What do we do? Just rip it. Uh, rip it off. Uh, you don't have to spare it. I can, I can yank it, but I might not be able to completely remove it. You see, it's stitched on very thoroughly. If you're able to roll it up uh, far enough to be able to make the connectors, then you can, uh, you can keep it there. Okay, copy. Well, you see, the more FT, uh, the more MLI, the merrier. So I have four connectors. I see four connectors. And what should I do there? Well, a look at the labeling, and then perform connector mating uh, in the appropriate sequence. Okay, so I'm con uh, mating the cables. Peter, you have mated it so I can remove it from the secure attachment? Yes, I already mated three connectors. Um, Peter, uh, the labeling on the cable connectors is very well visible, even the tab is visible. Uh, yes, I can see it very well. So I'm mating them in the order uh, they're labeled one, two, three, and four. Um, before is mated. Checking the labeling once again. One, number one, number two, three, and four. Everything matches. Is the uh, uh, video cable secured? Vladimir, I, I extracted it. One, one. I'm going to mate it. I opened the cap. Sounds good. Removed the cap. I'm going to mate it. So the arrow points were... This is Mission Control Houston. Two hours, 12 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov working through the timeline in the process uh, of continuing to mate uh, CORE's automated rendezvous antenna cables to the various uh, cable connector positions between the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the Prashal node module. This is uh, designed uh, to provide the capability for the uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system, the passive side of the CORE system, to uh, be able to pick up uh, navigational information from future approaching Russian visiting vehicles that will dock to Prishal. They'll also be installing uh, CORE's antennas and mating those antenna cables uh, a short time from now, part of the variety of activity designed to integrate Prishal into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Zero, you know, your thermo system, but Still, when I am uh, on eclipse, in eclipse, then, uh, you know, I, I'm really cold. Well, but the temperature should rise bit by bit. Yes, that it's bit by bit. That's, that's the, uh, the point. You know, you can deactivate the pump until you get warmer for a short while. That might be a solution. Vladimir, I completed the connection on uh, plate 26. 
So, and uh, the old are covered with caps. I wonder if you can see it on my camera. Yes, I can see that, uh, how they are uh, connected and capped. So, do I have to tie them up a little bit more, or can I just leave them as is? So the uh, caps are tied to the new cable. Uh, right, maybe I should uh, take them with me. This is Anton. Well, I just switched them places. This is Piotr. Vladimir, could you please remind me what is the next operation for me? The next task is uh, to work with antennas ARVK and two R ARVK. Anton, it uh, won't be easy for me to hop over you. And uh, there are no handrails uh, nearby. So how can I... Translate to the bundle. Well, I, well, I can just move away and uh, uh, make a way out for you. Well, you first can finish your uh, work, Anton. Yes, I think I have already connected the high frequency one already. Uh, no, a low frequency. So three low frequency ones I have already connected. This one is complicated. You know, it is more convenient with two or uh, with three uh, kind of a tab tabs it is easier to rotate them so it is easier Stop, Anton. I need to turn a little bit here. This is Moscow. Go ahead, Moscow. What about the uh, thermal system switch, uh, warm cold? In what position is it now? It is in the position cold because I'm a little bit warm, too warm. Copy, Piotr. I understand.
Чехол, конечно, не очень удобный. The cover is not convenient here. Yes, well, the camera is secured, so it's, a, it's fine, I guess. Чехол, который вот на основании, куда я закрепляю, вот эту скобу, которую фиксируют, она в этот чехол упирается. So when I'm securing uh, this bracket, uh, it touches the cover. So it's uh, not not very convenient and comfortable to install the bracket. I completed this one. Uh, this is Anton. Volodya, go ahead. So the next activity for me is on FPA patch panel 2. Yes, that's correct. Your roommate connectors on FF2. Copy. I took a video of the uh, connectors on the plate that I made it. So what plate? The one that I worked on, Anton? So did you put your camera away? Yes, I did. You know, it kind of disassembled in my hands. Uh, this is Anton, the one that I'm uh, working at. Hello. Vladimir, this is Anton. Go ahead. You know, could you please make a note that GoPro should be secured with an uh, on tape or somehow, you know, of course, they are getting out all the time. They are not secure. All right. I understand, Anton.
Unintelligible. Okay, this is a great shot. Yes, I'm uh, taking a shot of you. Uh, are you waiting for me? I need to translate to the bundle. I wonder if I will be able to circumvent you, so to say, get around you. Well, I can move around. I move, move away because I have completed my activity here. All right, that's great. So in order to deactivate it, what should I do? You should push it down and wait for about three seconds. Okay. All right, now I'm moving away, Piotr, for you. Okay, so you should uh, translate to the bundle. Yes, that's correct. And you did not uh, disassemble the bundle, right? Well, then I won't be able to get the antenna uh, right away. I will need to to think of something. All right, so you go there, and I will remate the connector. So are we on time, Vladimir? So the EV elapsed time is 2.5 hours. Okay. So I am near the FP2, patch panel 2. So we're a little bit behind the timeline, but it's all acceptable. Unintelligible. Okay, so I have approached the FP2 panel. This is Anton. Copy. Everything is stitched here. Uh, so I have opened connectors four, five, six, and I will remate connectors. Yes, connectors one, two, three. You will have to remate two, four, five, six. Okay, so I am uh, removing the uh, first one. Uh, yes, it's all good. Anton? Two hours, 27 minutes into uh, the spacewalk, Shkaplerov and Dubrov uh, basically on the timeline for the day as they are demating and remating uh, a series of uh, cable connectors associated with the core's automated rendezvous system for the Prashal node module to which future Russian visiting vehicles will dock the first of which uh, scheduled on March 18th, the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft that will carry three Russian cosmonauts to become part of the Expedition 67 crew. A short time from now, they'll be uh, installing and mating uh, an antenna, a new core's antenna, to the interface uh, between uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and Prishal part of the work that's ongoing uh, to install handrails, docking targets, and communications gear to integrate Prishal into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Okay, so the uh, satellite tether is on the tool carrier. Secured, and I will have to somehow get to antenna. Anton, I, I will move a little bit to the left so that uh, uh, not to bother you. So I will have to get to Krulok back to get the big antenna out.
первую очередь надо две наши контролочные нитки перерезать. Okay, so the, I first have to cut the threads, uh, the securing threads. Unintelligible. Moscow, this is ED1. How do you copy me? Uh, copy you, Anton? Go ahead. I have remated the connectors 1, 2, 3 to uh, 4, 5, 6. Copy. The covers are stitched on one side. Okay. Could you please uh, uh, inspect with your hands the connectors? Make sure that all the locks are locked, that they all are mated, you know, just to make sure that they are mated tight. Okay. Yes, you can feel it, whether they are tight or not. And you can see on camera, right? Yes, we can. Then could you please inspect the connectors on uh, SP1? Yes, let, let us check the connectors on, uh, 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 on the panel 1. 
in work. Can you see now on SP1, FP1, page panel 1? Can you see FP1 on camera? Yes, we see that. So all of high frequency connectors are capped. And uh, the switch on the low frequency is in the down position, right? Yes. Then everything is nominal. Can you see that now in Moscow? Yes, we can. There is also connector number seven here. Anton, come again. There is connector number seven for cable. So should I uh, put it on or cover it? Yes. Anton, we had a short LOS. How do you copy us now? Yes, I copy you. So I was talking about connector number seven. Yes, it is the connector on FP2-7. Okay, should I connect cable to it? Yeah, yes, you can do it right now, as we agreed. But I need to find an end of the cable. Yes, uh, please look at the labeling. All right, labeling. Eighteen one. That's what I can see. And so it's the other side again. The uh, I guess the other end. Okay. Yes, I can see that. So you we will get into eclipse soon. Yeah, I am much warmer. Right now. So, Gennady, what should I do? No, you know, I'm not warm, actually. So, I am deactivating the backup uh, pump, I guess. Gennady, do you copy me? Deactivating the pump? It is cold. I'm cold, you know. Vladimir, can you call, can you hear me? Unintelligible. How do you copy Moscow? We copy you. This is Mission Control, Houston. Can you repeat? Two hours, thirty-nine minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Anton Shkaplerov and uh, Pyotr Dubrov uh, continuing to uh, mate sets of cables for the uh, CORE's automated rendezvous system on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, providing connectivity between Naoka and uh, the module you see at the top of your screen, that's the Pushal node module, to which future Russian visiting vehicles will link up to. The uh, installation of uh, antennas will also be on the docket uh, during today's spacewalk, the 246th in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. In the offing uh, also will be a test of the uh, core's system on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module to ensure that the proper signal strength is being received at uh, the flight control room 
at Mission Control in Karlyov, outside of Moscow, as the result of uh, today's cable connection work. Uh, number three. Earlier, uh, sets of handrails and the uh, removal of thermal insulation from handrails on Prishal uh, was conducted uh, by Shkaplerov and Dubrov, this being the third spacewalk for Anton Shkaplerov, the fourth for Pyotr Dubrov. Piotr, did you copy my last? Yes, it is in position number three uh, on your go. Copy, I guess, with Shkade Shodelois. It's getting dark. All right, secured to the handrail, copy. I have turned off the U.S. headlights. Lights, uh, we don't need them for now. And we'll try and save our battery charges a little bit. Anton, how are you doing? All right, I have connected the cable, and I would like to tie it here once I have, once I drag it through there. Sounds good. Wow. Moscow, you are coming in so clear now. Okay, and which handrail should I um, drag the cable under? The one that's going to the ML, uh, MLM module. Copy. It ends in 5 2. So it's 7552. Five, well, I only see 7556 five, five, and 7557. Five, five, no, there it is. Well, if you want me to. It should be right opposite to it at like a 90 degree angle. Right.
Anton. Anton, go ahead. Are you tying it there? Uh, I'm just dragging it through there for now. Okay, sounds good. Once you are done, please turn on the camera. Oh, oops, sorry, this is for Piotr. You just press on. And I'm pressing on too. So for you, they asked you to power down the HECA camera and then turn it back on. In work. Cameras off, cameras on. Copy. Thank you. The cable, I dragged it over the cable and secured it to, uh, to handrail 4534. Copy, 4534. Right. Now, and I will be traveling to now, well, you need to get to um, our Oveca antenna transfer and get to the main um, bundle. Okay, maybe I should get to there too and remove two from there. All right, uh, the bundle. Here is the bundle. Piotr, the large antenna is right underneath you. Do you need help? Do you need me to hold anything? Would you like me to hold the capo, for example? Well, maybe the container. If you no, it's all on my side. And I should probably get a wrench because I can't really um, unscrew it with my fingers. Would you like me to give you just a regular wrench? Like, what do you mean regular? Like this? Yeah, but it's all, it's not really helping. I got only one screw out for now. Well, you got to the wing nut, right? Yes, and it's a little bit harder to get out. That's why. Because we can't do anything without it. Very challenging one.
Okay. Okay, got it. Almost. Three hours. It's two hours, 16 minutes, uh, and Anton, we can't, uh, Anton, I can't really hear you that well anymore. Um, the mic got moved a little bit to the side, one of the mics. Would you like me to hold the plate? I'm holding the cover. Okay, and I got the antenna in my hand. Okay. Now we need to figure out where to carry it. That is a $1 million question. It's uh, right behind, uh, around the area of the of plate number of the plate three. Well, do you see Casper right in there? And it's going to be um, secured there. Maybe we should check it Nyuka, right? Well, we checked antenna four. VK verified that it's um, tethered, that it's separate from the um, bundle, and uh, the side of VK antenna it's going to be um, needs to be placed at uh, location or position five behind in in the direction of the axis where there is a large um, lettering um, that you can see. It says pre-child. Let me get closer and see how we can lift it up there and move it over there. And, by the way, did you leave the cover like that? You didn't need to remove it completely because it seems to have been sewn um, not as the one. Do you mean the MLI cover? Yes. In two up, it's been sewn uh, two in four locations. I tore off uh, two, uh, but for the next one, we will have to tear it off completely regardless of uh, all the attachment points. Okay. And it will go into your bag. You see the wire tie it has gotten caught there. I do. Okay, so now the VECA antenna is secured to the handrails with two tethers, and uh, I have removed one. Um, wire tie, uh, and one more is remaining. Once we get it off, it's going to come to be free. Uh, so tell us, what's the best way to get to um, install this for our antenna? So, and where should we? Install it. Well, you can actually 
Secure it to yourself with a safety red. Okay, I am near the A5 location or position. You are like a little meteor. Yeah, I'm turning into a red dwarf. This is Mission Control Houston approaching the three-hour mark into today's spacewalk that's expected to run somewhere between six hours and 40 minutes and seven hours or more as Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov of Roscosmos, uh, the two Russian cosmonauts who are part of the Expedition 66 crew on the station, continue working uh, at the uh, very uh, bottom of the Earth-facing hardware on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That bulbous module is the Prashal module that arrived at the station on November 26th to serve as a multi-port docking node for new uh, Russian visiting vehicles that will be uh, arriving at the International Space Station starting with the Soyuz MS-21 vehicle in March. The uh, crew uh, stepping through its timeline uh, on the spacewalk that began at 6.17 a.m. Central Time this morning, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time. They are now in the process of uh, removing a, a thermal cover from uh, a uh, CORS automated rendezvous antenna that uh, will be installed and mated with cables that have been routed between the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the Prashal module. Oh, and like this, and maybe we should turn it um, again, counterclockwise a little bit so that it fits nicely. Well, I'm looking at the, like, general plan. The uh, work to install uh, these CORE's automated uh, rendezvous uh, antennas and associated hardware connecting uh, the uh, Naoka and Prashal modules is designed to provide uh, the automated navigational capability that will basically uh, send navigational information to approaching Russian vehicles for automated dockings to Prashal. It has five docking ports. What is the difference? So a number of uh, Russian vehicles could be mated to Prashal at any given time in the future. This is the first of a number of spacewalks, up to nine spacewalks, that are planned uh, throughout the course of the year to not only uh, outfit and integrate Prashal into the Russian segment of the International Space Station, but uh, starting in the spring to also continue the outfitting of Naoka that arrived at the International Space Station last July to serve both as a scientific laboratory and as another airlock for Russian-based spacewalks. Yes, make sure that it's not rotating and not popping out of the mounting location once it's in the closed position. And what about this red flag? Uh, does it need to be... Um, do you need, need it to be uh, secure? Well, it is primed when it is sunk a little bit. Well, it's uh, uh, primed, but it's not out, so it's kind of sunk a little bit. Well, no joy here. And it's refusing to um, be taken off. Well, let's try and get it out. And you have primed it? Yes. Okay, make sure that this little red tongue is turned by 90 degrees. And once you turn it by 90 degrees, 
It will uh, sink into the body of the antenna, even without the lock, and make sure that there is a uh, that it clicks. So the checkout is uh, to make sure that nothing's rotating it at all. And once you connect the cables, please take pictures of the results of your of the installation. Sounds good. Will do. Okay, I see FEP 87. And uh, where should I carry A04, A4, the cover from A4? Do I need to bring it to the to where the letter P is or Russian P is indicated? No. So when you look at that um, connection point to the left of me. That's where you move away. You're moving up to the left. Well, I don't know how. Uh, well, there are n there is no place to secure it here. Um, is it, it's covered up with the MLI. Is it to the left from you? Is it this one? Uh, no, it's to the left of me. So right next to your left arm, yes. And uh, this you can't see it because you're covering it up with the camera. And it needs to be really close to the pin. Well, Fritchell is on both sides, right? And yes. And you want to have it on the opposite side from Fritchell. So, from connector point three to number four. Holy moly. What's that? Well, it's not a, just Velcro. They weren't happy with just Velcro. They tied it to get, they tied it down with wire ties and then tied the wire ties into a knot. So I have to untie it somehow. No, no, it does seem to be, it seems to be, um, Loosening up. Tell that right in front of you. There is an umbilical connector. There, there is a tether that's holding the antenna, and just see where you can secure the tether to. And I will carry it. Well, it's secured with another tether. Yes, there is one on one on my side. No, there is one more on my side. This is Piotr. Are we sure we're not going to use anything else? Well, there is a tether to the EVA2 carrier. Maybe we should uh, switch it, switch the tether to a different location. Well, that's the uh, actually the Kepa who. EVA tool carrier tether. So you want us, we should leave it there and secure it to something. Well, maybe secure it to just like the Kepo unit to itself. I'll secure it to the cover. Okay, doesn't want to reach to the cover. Let me just secure it to the handrail, to the handle. Done, done. Okay, I'm removing the um, Kepo. It's been disconnected. Uh, I can translate, correct? Uh, 
So this whole bundle, what is it secured with? Which one? The remaining one. Well, I have one tether, and it goes to um, container number one, and there is nothing. Okay, well, connected to 73.1, just to be on the safe side. Okay, do you have the EVA2 carrier secured? Yes, I do. Well, the translation handrail to the... Um, and let me reconnect the tether here. Okay. Feels like winter. Well, it's very quiet here. Okay, got this one. Okay, I opened up um, the retain cover 7, but this cover doesn't, the, the connectors don't have any markings or anything uh, on them. You know, look at the body. The body should be marked clearly, and maybe the covers as well. Okay, I see the markings on the body, uh, not on the covers. Okay, good, understood. Okay, seven, two. Seven, one. Okay, and make sure there is this pink letter P. So that is also the um, installation seating allocation A4. I see FAP6. That's where I'm going to make the cables to, correct? So uh, seven one is mated, copy, and the latch is closed.
Seven two is mated and one is closed. Copy. So close the um, caps. Well, the caps are tied up here. Okay, sounds good. We can leave them there near the flap. Anton. Anton. Go ahead. Well, the pump has been turned off for 30 minutes now. Uh, how do you feel? I feel chilly. Okay, I understand. Well, I'm working. Understand. So you don't have any desire to turn the pump back on. Okay, well, this is up to you, but make sure you don't overheat. Well, I don't want to catch a cold. Oh, there's no viruses here. You just don't want to get a cold because being of uh, being cold. Peter, I secured the cap. Go ahead, Peter. Are you feeling better in terms of uh, uh, thermal regulation? Well, I feel a little bit cooler. Um, no, thank you. Do you want me to make it a little bit cooler? Well, I can. You can make it a notch. This is Mission Control Houston. Three hours, thirteen minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, uh, Shkaplerov and Dubrov are continuing uh, to work well through the uh, timeline in the outfitting of the uh, Prushal node module that you see uh, the cosmonauts working at in this view from external cameras on the International Space Station. They have installed uh, a pair of CORE's automated rendezvous antennas on Prushal uh, to facilitate future automated dockings by approaching Russian visiting vehicles and are in the process of wrapping up the mating of uh, cables to uh, connector panels uh, between uh, Prushal and the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. I Once uh, this work is complete, uh, the next uh, the next item on the timeline will be uh, the mating of a television cable, providing television connectivity between uh, Naoka and Prushal. Go ahead and remove it. That will be uh, followed uh, later in today's spacewalk by the relocation of a television camera from one port on Prushal to another that, uh, again, uh, all designed uh, to facilitate the future arrival of Russian visiting vehicles. To myself. And now I need an an uh, to get an antenna. Yes, it would be better to install it together the two of you, and if possible, secure the, hand, the hook handle. Okay, I see it. I took photographs of the antenna installation location, and so I'm going to translate to your location. Oh, you're welcome to. I am cleaning up here for now. Okay. Now it's not that convenient to jump around here.
Антон, ну вообще без страховки ее не, не осталось. Congratulations on the sunrise. Likewise, well, my feet are right above your uh, head, Peter, and I'm going to translate to the right. So the sun is uh, shining right into my eyes, and I can't see anything. How should I translate over here? That's me here. I'm to reach here, so I'm trying. So I need to get out of the way, so I'm not in the way. Maybe I can turn around. Peter, Peter, the, the usual request for you: uh, could you turn off both cameras and then turn them on? Okay, copy. Marvel. I need to figure out the. Uh, here it says ring here. Okay. So are we going to remove these wires afterwards, after we are done with the installation? Yes, uh, provided they are not in the way of the installation process. I think I need to catch a little break. Uh, my fingers are tired. Okay, get a break. Looking at the cameras. So I turned it off turned on, and the one on my helmet is off, so I just turned it back on. Okay, here is the uh, installation location. And I will try to turn it around toward the sitting spot. So the lid should be facing away from this kit that is located near our feet. It uh, should be pointing that way. I need to move to the other side. I will move over here. I will need uh, you to hand me uh, my tethers. Hold on. You can move this uh, to the side for now. The, that means I myself need to translate away. Okay, maybe I can move over here. So your files that were adjustable, that the deals there. My tether got snagged onto your adjustable length, tether. Okay, we can straighten it out. Так, adjustable держит эту крышку. So the adjustable tether is holding uh, securing this uh, lid. 
Okay, I will remove one small red. It's nearby. Well, no, uh, the lid is not being secured by anything or adjustable or anything. Okay, so you remove the MLI. Could you move farther to the right over there? Yes. I, the length of the um, adjustable length feather should be enough for you to move. Uh, yes, it should be fine. Okay, where is the um, installation uh, spot? Okay, let me reattach the hook. Okay, here we go. Can you hold on to the antenna? I'll try to release this tether that is currently wrapped around your adjustable tether when you untangle them. Okay. These hooks uh, can be conveniently attached to this handrail. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. We need to rotate it to into that direction. Which one? Oh, okay, I can't do it there. So the uh, lid needs to be facing away from Earth. We need to remove the lid. And then later, maybe we can do a, maybe we can do a fit check right now. Okay, that's great. Should should I uh, slacken the rat a little bit? So I can turn it off uh, from my side, from FEPA 6. So we can probably reattach red. Because it's in the way. Okay, I will try to install it here. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, approaching the three and a half hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk. You can see a great view as we enter an orbital sunrise over the South Pacific of uh, Anton Shkaplerov, the Expedition 66 commander on the right, Pyotr Dubrov, Roscosmos flight engineer on the left, as they uh, continue uh, to hook up cables to connector panels on the Prashal node module that is at the uh, Earth-facing port of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. This uh, Prashal uh, node module with five docking ports will be the uh, port of arrival 
for future Russian visiting vehicles, starting with the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft in March. Yes, we can just, we just need to make sure. Handrails, CORE's automated rendezvous equipment, docking targets, and other associated hardware to bring Prishal into full activated mode are the uh, subject of today's spacewalk, the first of the year out of the International Space Station, and the 246th in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades that began in December of 1998. And then we'll just have to turn it around. So do you want to secure the rat to the handle? Yes, the tether over here, just to loosen it a little. Here we go. Okay, I hooked it to it. You can remove it again. Except that here I see um, that the connector for the antenna is uh, m missing labeling. Well, we'll find it eventually. Okay, let's secure the lid. Do you have anything to secure it with, uh, or should I do it? Well, anchor hooks. Uh, then we can release. And what should we secure it to? Uh, the tape on the side can do. So can we try to uh, send it this way? Well, I did rotate the screw a little bit. It's easy uh, to rotate. Just need to hold on to it. That's the reason to try it. Are you uh, tightening it? Okay, that's great. So how is it going? Trying to turn around. Your tether is a little bit on the way. In the way. Okay, I got it. I was able to remove the lid. So we can secure the handle. Be careful. Okay. 
So I'm removing the desert from the handle. So did you close the walk? Not yet. Oh, not yet. I just took the tether. Okay, the walk. So I need to pull it and uh, move it to some to some sort of direction. It should say open. Okay. Uh, position it here. Okay, try. You can hold on to that. Okay, it basically is holding on to it. We need to uh, pull it, retract it. MCC Moscow. MCC Moscow, how do you read us? We need to remove those uh, wire ties. Four AO antenna is uh, installed and the lock is closed. So we're going to be uh, making the cables. So and the uh, handle lock is in the release position. Yes, I confirm. Okay, copy. So, do you have the cable? Vladimir, we're on FEPA 6. We're going to connect the antenna there. Correct. And it's going to open, correct? And where do we put the cables? We shouldn't be routing on top. So it's going to go up, so the cables should be at the bottom where the handle is. For you, it's going to be above. Okay. Well, MLI is stitched on here. So is it still on the on the tether? Is the antenna still secured on the tether? I uh, wanted to uh, reattach the large rats. So it doesn't go in the way, it doesn't get in the way of the uh, cables. Yes, you can remove the uh, uh, safety tether from the uh, antenna. Okay. Well, I can secure it to the uh, handle. There we go. The pet six two labeling is there. Right now the lock is closed.
Так, Вол... Володя. Как слышно? Тяга. Тяга. Ну... Okay, go ahead. Peter has uh, two, made two more cables, and other than that, everything is done here. So um, I think I can start translating in the direction of the target. Yes, I think so. I'm going to go get the um, uh, target. I'm going to mate it, and then I'm going to remove the attach point. The uh, um, attachments. Okay, that is uh, lane two, and the uh, walks for the latches for the target are along lane one. Well, we need to get the target first. Okay, where should I translate? Uh, can you give me uh, this cable? Yes. I... Okay, this one. So I'm going to release my red. Yes, the um, walk uh, is closed and the cable is mated. So it's long and I can't get a hold of it. Well, I need to uh, translate uh, above you. So I'm trying to um, get a hand. So Anton, are you the one holding on with your right hand to the uh, handle? Which handle? On the walk of the uh, antenna. No. I am holding on with my right arm, um, right hand to the handrail. You see, the cable is getting right under the handle here. Am I right? Yes. So maybe it's not um, allowing uh, to be allowing to fix it to secure it. Do you see it? Yes, I can secure it. So the handle is uh, fully engaged, yes. So it uh, goes in, comes out. So we are having doubts uh, whether it got uh, secured in the socket in its uh, final installation position. Yes, I think it's in the socket. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Peter, I'm going to give you my short uh, tether when I didn't have the intent, I was able to do it myself.
So we have connected, made the connectors. Copy, Piotr. Okay, so this is the long one here. As I'm holding it, I got it. Okay, so let me reattach it here. It will be more convenient. Now the cap. The cap is uh, connected. Uh, So I will be removing wire ties here. Piotr, this is Moscow. Go ahead. So you will put everything in the nominal position, check the wire ties, the tethers. And just in case, try to remove the cover. Although it is stitched, we understand. Uh, but uh, maybe, you know, you will be strong enough and will be able to remove it. Well, uh, I will try. Of course, I have some experience of uh, applying a physical effort to some structure elements, so I will do my best. You know, uh, I don't want to overdo it. So what about the jettisoning Moscow? Maybe it's time to jettison the antenna cover or housing? Okay, so I managed to remove the uh, MLI cover. Piotr, thank you so much. We saw it. Anton, go ahead. You know, you asked about jettisoning? Not, not yet, not yet. Okay, so what should I do then next? Well, it's just uh, kind of hanging there. You know, you also have the skull cap cover uh, hanging there. Okay, Anton, you will have to get uh, uh, the targets right now. I'm next to the bundle uh, already. This is Anton. Anton, uh, you can, do not have uh, any spare tether that you can secure the antenna cover and leave it there. So I don't know what we're waiting for, why we cannot jettison it. Are we waiting for, you know, some kind of location uh, on, the, on the ground uh, that we will pass uh, over to do it? You know, we have to jettison uh, a few items uh, together. So that's what we're waiting for. Vladimir, is it okay just to leave the caps? Uh, as they are now, uh, so that I don't have to connect them together. Well, Piotr, I think that will be fine. You know, it's uh, very uh, hard to access there in between the connectors. All right, Piotr, could you please take pictures or video of the plate and the head of the antenna itself? The one that uh, you removed the cover from? Okay, uh, we'll do. Let me try to do that.
куда мне эту шапочку деть? Она мне Фред ходила. So where should I uh, sew this cow cap piece uh, cover? You know, of course it's on my red. It is secured to my uh, equipment tether. Uh, nobody answers on the ground. Anton, could you please repeat your question? We did not copy. I'm asking about this cow cap headpiece cover, because I, uh, you know, my red is secured to it. I'm just uh, moving around with it. So the or the red that is on KPU, EVA2 carrier. I will secure it there. Okay. Okay, so that one is uh, done. I'm free from it now. No, I cannot reach to the wire tie in order to remove it. This is Piotr. So which cover you are talking about, Piotr? I need to remove the wire tie from the antenna, Moscow, for the transportation. Well, they are still on the antenna, these wire ties? Yes, they are still there. Yes, they should be, you know, uh, removed, but I cannot reach out to them. So I, what other options do I have here? There is just one and only fan rail, and I cannot attach my red tether to it. I will have to translate inaudible. Okay, so you'll have to go around. Yes, that's correct. I will try to retract the tether here a little bit.
Где-то, да, что ли? Did you copy? Петя, как нас слышно? Петр, did you copy us? How do you hear us uh, now? Антон, ответь супер. Антон, this is Moscow. How do you copy? Ребята, мы вас запрашивали. Вы... Guys, did you hear our calls? Петя, Антон, как слышите? Петер Антон, how do you copy MCC Moscow? Петр, Антон, это МСС Москвы. Как вы копируете? Мы звоним вам. Okay, another MLI flap or cover is removed, and now I will have to get closer to the uh, clamp. Петр Антон, МСС Москва. Вас слышим. We can cut, we can hear you.
Петр от... Петр, Петр Антон. Антон. Mission Control, Moscow. How do you copy? Петр Антон, МСС Москва. We did not hear your answer. Петр Антон, проверка связи. Петр Антон, for come check. Петя или Антон? Петр or Антон, come check. How do you copy, respond? Пэш, ответит по Москве в канале СГ-2. Антон, ответит. Антон, МСС, Москва, on space to ground, two. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for a voice check. Станция Хьюстона во втором канале по проверке связи. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Anton or Piotr. Антон, проверка связи, как слышите. Петр Антон, комчек. How do you copy us? Петя Антон. Петр Антон. Have you loud and clear as well? Grounds said they were having trouble getting calm from you. I'll report back to them on three, but I have you loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for voice check. How read? Houston on Space Ground 2 for Kayla and voice check. How read? Петр Антон. So, Петр, are you going to be there long? You know, I have removed one wire tie and have two more to remove. Петр, until the testing through the ground side, we have very little time left. It is Moscow. Okay. I will uh, have to 
double check that I won't lose the container, so it's, it is secured. Uh, well, we don't need this container, but we don't want to lose it. No, we should not lose anything. And on and theater, this is Kayla. I just want to let you know that ground is troubleshooting a uh, audio issue. They can hear you loud and clear. However, their comm is not making it up to station or to you on space to ground two, and they're working that now. Okay, thank you, Kayla. We will pronounce all our actions. The ground will here. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Copy that, and you guys are doing an awesome job. We have a front row seat from the cupola, and it's been really fun watching you. Hope it's going well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have a real fun too. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, five minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov uh, continuing their work, having uh, completed uh, the installation of uh, cables and uh, a pair of CORE's automated rendezvous antennas on the Prashal node module that you see here in the field of view. Currently, uh, we are troubleshooting a minor communications problem with one of the two primary space-to-ground uh, uplink uh, voice communications channels. And so communications is being relayed to the two spacewalkers through NASA astronaut Caleb Barron inside the International Space Station. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for voice check. We hear you. Has you loud and clear on 2, Houston. And we hear you from outside, too. All the clear. Yeah. Okay, we copy. Okay, we copy. Peter Anton, Come check on space to ground two. We copy you loud and clear. Just excellent come. Great. And uh, here on the ground, uh, the communications flight controller, the Cronus, as she is called, uh, recycled uh, the uh, power channel uh, between uh, the ground here in Houston and space to ground two, and uh, that cleared up the problem, which was momentary in uh, nature. So we're back uh, to normal communications once again. Uh, the crew uh, is awaiting a test of the CORE's automated rendezvous equipment, uh, the connectivity between uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and uh, the Prashal node module. This uh, antenna cable combination just installed. Uh, this uh, ultimately will ensure the capability of approaching uh, Russian visiting vehicles who will be docking uh, at the uh, Prashal module to have full navigational uh, data capability being relayed back and forth between the vehicles themselves and uh, their docking port at Prashal. So the spacewalk uh, ongoing uh, with Shkaplerov and uh, Dubrov now uh, pressing ahead uh, to hook up uh, a television cable to provide uh, TV connectivity between Naoka and Prishal. And uh, we are just a few minutes away from a, a CORE's 
uh, rendezvous system antenna test uh, between the flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov and uh, the vehicle to ensure that uh, the newly installed CORE's equipment on Prishal is operating as expected. So, in which direction should I move uh, forward? If you can see my position. Okay, so there's a handrail here and uh, the removed uh, MLI flap. So, at, at what handrail you are now at? 73. Uh, 26, 27. Okay, copy. It is the opposite side, Anton. So where you installed the four AVK antenna, it was plane number two. Now you will have to move to plane number one. Okay, so I will have to go around the locations where the uh, MLI was removed. Yes, that's correct. So you move towards MLM and uh, translate across uh, plane number two, Anton. Okay, MLM, uh, plane number two. So you will reach plane number one and then go down between the plane number one and two. All right, sounds good. Let me figure it out first. Spectacular view of the uh, Prashal node module as uh, the International Space Station flies into an orbital sunset over Athens. Shkaplerov and Dubrov now four hours, 12 minutes into their spacewalk, continuing uh, to work, currently uh, moving a uh, television cable to connect uh, the television system capability between the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the Prashal node module. Additional handrail limiters are being installed on a variety of handrails on Prushal as well. These limiters are devices uh, to uh, prevent tether hooks from uh, getting snagged on the handrails themselves for future spacewalkers. I use the wire tie to tie the cables together. The cables are going to be secured uh, underneath the antenna and the wire tie is not going to uh, be in the way when the antenna unfolds. Great. Then you can please leave the area so that we can send the command to open the antenna. Will do. And uh, what uh, are you going uh, right or left? 
I have only one route available to the right. Well, I'm with you. It's not too hard of a fast. Okay, so I'm going fast and over you, and we see it. Do you want me to move a little bit more? Could you please confirm, guys, could you please confirm that the antenna is, you have cleared the antenna and you're away from it? Yes. Thank you. While we pass uh, in between satellites on our tracking and data relay satellite system, we'll uh, regain the video downlink uh, that you've been enjoying throughout the course of today's spacewalk momentarily. In the meantime, this view from a balcony camera at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, where Russian flight controllers uh, continue to look over the shoulders of Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov in this first spacewalk of 2022 out of the International Space Station. Okay, I see that the antenna is opening up. Great. And it's a shame we are not getting any video right now. We copy your report. Copy. All right, we confirm there is movement, the antenna is moving. We see it, we see the antenna is moving. Mm, looks like the antenna has opened up successfully. <laughs> Uh, you've been um, working for four hours, 16 minutes, time outside. And at the uh, four hours, 16 minute mark into the spacewalk, Shkaplerov and Dubrov reporting that the CORE's automated rendezvous antenna just installed on the uh, Prushal module has uh, opened and activated as planned on command from the Russian flight controllers in Koryov. So good news in that regard. Uh, Prushal uh, now should have uh, a nominal CORE's automated rendezvous system, the passive side of the system, the approaching visiting vehicles coming to the station for a docking to Prushal always have an active CORS rendezvous system. The CORS is the automated system that basically bounces radio signals back and forth uh, like beacons uh, to upgrade uh, and update navigational data into the onboard computers of an approaching vehicle that uh, tell uh, the vehicle how far they are from the docking port, in this case, Prushal, and what the rate of closure is. Piotr, do you see that kind of got side around me a little bit? And there are two different ones, right? Yes. They are, these are two different ones and they both go around your um, tethers. All right, you say you're saying around the tether, correct?
Okay. I can get the crew lock bag now. And uh, I will not do anything with the retainer, but I can start working on the MLI. And I'm near the uh, A2 area. So, and I am near Theta 2. And I think if I use the handrails for plane 2 and move to the left, then I can get to them. Well, some of the hand This is Mission Control Houston, uh, four hours, 19 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, if you're looking closely, you can see at the top of your screen the CORE's automated rendezvous antenna uh, with the uh, antenna spinning as it is scheduled to do during this test, implemented by the Russian flight controllers in Koryov, now slowing down as planned. This uh, signifying a good test of the core's antenna and the connectivity uh, in the cabling that was routed between the Prashal module and the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module at the bottom of your screen. And I can give you my uh, tether and you can uh, connect the and secure the MLI with it, to it. All right, I've got the um, tether. So do you want me to tie it around you? Did, is that what you had in mind? Yes, just make sure that the uh, length of the tether is sufficient. Should it's too short. Um, is it going to be long enough? to tear it off. Well, and there is another knot. Uh, how do you untie it? And do you even have to untie it? Yeah, you have to untie it. What did you do? In one place, I just uh, untied it with your gloves on. Yes, with your, my gloves on. And then the other just tore it off. And should I just maybe maybe I can just uh, uh, tear it off but here it's screwed on So where that tape is uh, sewn, that's where you can try and tear it. Well, let me um, push forward. Do you have what to cut it with? Well, I have uh, some tools in the crew lock bag. All right, just uh, uh, secure it to the tether and uh, press on. Understood. But we still need the crew lock back. Peter, Anton, we got a question. When there was no calm with the ground, could you um, hear each other? Yeah, we we heard each other really well. So, Bobby, thank you.
Дмитрий Антон. Федор Антон. Курс прошел без замечаний. Курс тест has been a success. Thank you. Everything was great. It all worked out. That's really good news then. And the target is right here. All right, I am in position one. So you have the opportunity to walk around, but maybe you can stay here and pull. Okay, well, we can do that. Okay, I've got the crew log bag with the Lancer to cut off the MLI. Did you copy? I did. Okay. The most convenient. Could you please tell us, Moscow? Uh, should we um, move through plane two or pl plane four to get to to get to where to the MLI that you want us to remove? Well, you want to uh, install the control unit first. Yes. So it's going to be the small target.
Мне So it needs to be bent here, right? Oh, no, I'm asking not about that. I was asking where you want me to put the wire tie. I think, first of all, we need to remove the cover before we install everything, because otherwise we wouldn't be able, we may not be able to reach it afterwards. And secure it around... Uh, the French hook. This is Mission Control Houston, four and a half hours into today's spacewalk by Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov. The uh, two cosmonauts uh, continuing to work through their timeline for a spacewalk expected to last uh, over six hours and 40 minutes today as they uh, continue to outfit and integrate the recently arrived Prishal node module into the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The two cosmonauts uh, have installed handrails, removed thermal insulation from those handrails on Prishal to facilitate future spacewalking activities on the node module and uh, in the vicinity of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. They also installed uh, cables uh, for the core's automated rendezvous system on uh, the uh, multipurpose laboratory module as well as uh, a pair of uh, CORE's automated rendezvous antennas. Those were tested and uh, checked out and found to be in good shape. The two uh, cosmonauts are currently uh, in the process of installing a television cable to provide TV capability between Prishal and Naoka, and soon we'll be installing docking targets on the node module itself. Right, looks like it's secured really tightly. And where do you want me, where do you suggest I attach this thingy? Also use the wire tie? Or anything else that I can find around? Tell us. So we are attached with a small, small uh, rut. Can I you can I work with it without actually uh, uh, reattaching this small, small rut to myself? If the uh, crew lock bag is nearby, then yes. Well, the crew lock bag is attached to me and secured to me. Then. Well, and the hose is not cooperating here either. Right. You have to use the handrail, and it will help you guide it there. Right. 
Oh, maybe it's not that. No, 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 don't do it like this. Go back. It was actually uh, looking much better before. Basically, you will be retrieving it like that, like this. The direction of the antenna should be as follows. Vertical, and then it's tilted and then turned. The bracket should be turned away from the plate, and the target should be pointing in the direction of the approaching vehicle. Well, maybe you can give us some sort of a direction where to point it. Could you move the camera, zoom the camera out a little bit? It looks like, yes, it looks right. I just wanted to express my deepest gratitude to however sewed all this on and secured it so, so tightly. Thank you, guys. Anton? Go ahead. Are you starting with the second an antenna? Is it, hold on, is it the first, the second? Is it the big one or the small one? The small one? Do you see the little one? 